Check, check, check. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Can everyone hear me okay? Testing one, two, three. How about that? Look at us doing the live streams. All right, I think we're close enough here. Hey everybody, how are we doing? This is our first live stream on this channel, and I guess you could say my first live stream at all. It's kind of funny because I don't typically do stuff like this in general, so this will be exciting. And uh, precursor to all of this, six hours to build a control room. It's not six hours start to finish, it's six hours, let's see how far we get kind of thing. We're going to we're going to try and do a a full thing here and try to get coordinated enough that I can not only do this but read your comments and stuff with the live chat. Very exciting. Hi everybody from everywhere. It's good to see you and this should be exciting. All right, just on my other screen here, making some adjustments. And I knew that was gonna get me on the backwards text. That was uh, one of those things where it's it looks right in OBS, but then it's not. So thank you for pointing that out. We're in good shape there. All right, so let's pop this guy up here. Yep, that looks right. So the more I thought about this, I I don't have a plan going into this. This is completely uh, impromptu as far as this goes. But I was thinking a little bit about this today. And having a budget and going to find this certain amount of equipment is going to be really hard because I don't have people who can quote me gear. So the whole budget idea might be a little bit of a loose concept. Maybe we'll just kind of estimate based on kind of my knowledge of previous stuff. So uh, yeah, I was thinking maybe for the actual control room itself, uh, I think maybe like a small web-based news station, kind of like a three-camera build, um, that kind of stuff. Audio, of course, uh, whether we make that analog or digital, I don't know yet. Let's see what you guys kind of think. But uh, yeah, let's, let's say we want to do a, yeah, that, okay, that'll be a good start. Let's make a little text document here. So we'll pull this up and we'll kind of give ourselves some requirements. So let's see here. Make this a little bigger so everyone can see it. And we'll say we want this to be a new studio for a web show. Hi, everybody. We got some people joining. That is excellent. We'll see what this turns into. So, again, I'm thinking probably three cameras. And we'll say for this, they'll be manned. Three manned cameras. If I misspell anything, that's why I'm in broadcast. I, I don't, <laughs> I, don't judge me. All right, uh, three cameras manned, 
And why don't we say one robotic camera? Because we'll make this interesting. We'll do one robo cam. And for that, we're of course going to need a video switcher with at least four inputs for those cameras. We'll kind of dynamically change this as we go on. But uh, we'll do a video switcher. And I guess it will depend if we need a sync generator. We'll, we'll see if the switcher can provide sync. Again, we're going to say that this is we're budget conscious, you know, but uh, without a specific number in mind. So we'll say maybe we're looking for a video switcher with, here's how we'll break this down. Four, we'll do X just to say, you know, four or more, of course. Four inputs and you could use a composite video out as a sync generator. Yes. As a matter of fact, um, most sync, uh, at least bi-level and tri-level sync, are composite video signals. So that's another thing we should talk about, is we're going to assume that this is probably going to be 1080p, uh, because we're not doing 4K right now. There's no way. So 1080p, which means we're probably going to want tri-level sync. <clears throat> where we can support it. So yes, we could use uh, a tri-level sync or bi-level sync generator, which will be a composite video signal, um, which makes, of course, DAing that, distributing that amongst our gear very easy. Um, there is gear that can take a reference signal off of uh, an HD signal just by uh, using that as an input and then timing itself off of that. Uh, it's not, I don't want to say it's not common, but it's, I prefer doing things with, uh, with actual trial sync, just keeping everything consistent. So let's say there's also going to be a need for a video router as to how many ins and outs that is going to be depending on our, of course, destinations, which we're going to assume there's going to be some multi-viewers here, some monitors, uh, maybe a couple on-set monitors. So uh, say maybe to be safe, at least 16 outs. That's a good place to start. We'll say 16 outs, 16 ins. And as we kind of come up with a concept here, we might have to scale that up a bit. So three cams, one robo, so four total, so at least four inputs. And I'm going to say maybe at least six outputs. And some other things we probably want from our switcher are digital video effects, DVEs, uh, especially if we're doing a news type web show. We're going to want two boxes. Uh, for our local talent to be able to toss to our remote talent. So we'll put that in as a prerequisite, some DVEs, um, at least two for sure. Um, we talked about possibly a uh, tri-level sync out. Um, we're going to assume that our cameras are going to be referenceable, um, but our RoboCam maybe not. So maybe having some internal frame syncs would be useful so that we can synchronize those non synchronable sources. But uh, we could we could find a RoboCam that takes sync. Well, we'll see. So we'll, we'll make that a bit of a prerequisite. Um, we're not going to do anything like uh, NDI or anything like that for this. I think we're going to keep it all standard uh, HD SDI, uh, high definition serial digital interface. So we could say that these could be uh, HD SDI with maybe some HDMIs for the monitors. 
assuming that the switchers are producing their own multi-viewers. If not, then we would have to look at multi-viewers, but... Uh, Yeah, we'll see what we can find here. On the audio side, um, yes, 3G SDI. Um, HD SDI is, can be 1.5 gigahertz or uh, gigahertz, gig, yeah, 1.5 for up to 1080i, so that could be 720p, 1080i. Uh, so for 1080p, it is going to have to be at least 3G speeds. So yes, to be specific, that'll be HD SDI 3 gig. So I'll make a note. So yes, everything's going to need to be 3G capable. <laughs> yes. Yes, Eric is absolutely right. There is a lot in theory there. And it could even probably do uh, 1080 PSF, right? So that's, that's if you wanted to do it over 1.5. So PSF is a uh, kind of special version of uh, 1080 progressive where it's performing progressive, but it's still interlacing it. I'd have to double check my definition of that. But uh, yes, 1080p SFS, S, F, S, S, F, whatever. See, now you're going to make me Google it. 1080p SF, right? Progressive segmented frame. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. All the asterisks. Yes, progressive segmented frame is a scheme designed to acquire, store, and modify, and distribute progressive scan video using interlaced equipment. So that is a thing. Is it the best thing for this? Probably not. No. Again, the the world is our burrito, guys. We we're we're going <laughs> we're going 3G. So that's what we're going with. Uh, audio side, for sure, we'll probably stick with some analog uh, audio stuff for our microphones. Let's say it's at least three talent in the studio itself. So we'll say uh, three lavaliers. And man, maybe. We don't really need any shotguns or natural sound ambient. It's all going to be pretty isolated to that. So I would say with with this type of thing too and a, and a web show, maybe, maybe if we're getting excitable, we could put in a uh, wireless stick mic. CG audio ends. Yes, there's the need for character generators if our character generator is giving us audio. Um, of course, there's also the possibility that depending on the switcher we get, that could have audio sources as well uh, for like uh, transitions and things like that. Some switchers can can do that. Um, and then there's of course a video server. So there's all of those other sources. So let's let's put that down. Other sources. So probably some sort of video server because we're going to want playback of things. Topical audio interface for yep audio interface for the playback. So that'll be audio included. I guess we'll just do like an AV here to know that it's going to be audio and video. Uh, character generator. Um, possibly audio video doesn't hurt again, depends on the CG. Um, don't need a replay system for this necessarily. 
So that's that's good. What else you guys think we need? I'd say maybe if possible two channels. Two channels of this, maybe two channels of this. <clears throat> Certainly doesn't hurt. Now, I wouldn't say we would need to incorporate like a master control system into this right now. That's <laughs> well, we'll save that for the next live stream. But yeah, so we have some other sources. We have some requirements of our video servers, our cameras, which I say we can probably move these down into here. Cameras, Robo, and so that's what a total of four more sources. So we know, right? Two, four, two channels. Yeah, so we know we need at least eight inputs several outputs. So we can also talk about, yes, shading. So that's going to be part of our cameras in our video chain. If that is going to, where did I just put them? Here they are, our cameras. So we'll say that these are three cameras with CCUs. Um, computer sources for remote callers. All right, so some uh, scan converters. That would be good. Um, now, again, depending on the switcher, some switchers can take like an HDMI input directly from that computer source. So we could say, maybe we should start using some dashes here, stay a little bit more organized. Yeah. All right, so uh, we'll do maybe two PCs. And we'll assume that if we can, we will try to see if we can get the switcher to bring those inputs in. Otherwise, we will have to get some converters to go from uh, either HDMI or DisplayPort to uh, 3G SDI to get that in. So. But yeah, that'd be good. One to two PCs for those types of sources. Very, very good. All right. Um, we'll say one wireless stick just for the sake of argument. And then the other audio sources, we'll have to see if whatever we look at, if they are already analog audio outputs, then that's great. Um, oh, man. Let's just say we'll just shoot for like a 32 channel mixer for now. I have one in mind that we could probably use. <clears throat> if anyone's ever used uh, any of the, uh, the Midas's, that's one of my favorites. The MID, yeah, Midas M32s. So we could look at that. 32 channels, that should be good. Plus, the Midas also has uh, some add-on cards. So if you want to go like Dante, there's a Dante expansion card or Matty, which is really useful. So that will give us a little bit more flexibility there. Also, has, I, think, I think by default, it has a PC interface card. So that's there. All right, what are we looking at here? Sync, video router. Let's talk about some of our destinations. <clears throat> so for sure, what about embedding? What about embedding? <laughs> oh man, embedded audio. <laughs> Yes, the 32X. Um, so 32X is, or wait, comment, but save about 1,000 and get the X32, same thing. What do you think? The X32, are you talking about the uh, 32C, like the, the 1RU version of it that's all digital? Um, oh, the Behringer X32. Yeah, I mean, it, it's pretty much, it is 
pretty much the same thing, right, these days? Well, Midas, is, Midas was bought by Behringer, I thought. Yeah. <laughs> tomato tomatoes. We'll consider that. We'll say the Midas or or the Behringer. <clears throat> Destinations. Uh, oh, speaking of which, anyone who's used the Midas or the Behringer, um, what do you guys think of their uh, latest user interface patch or upgrade? I guess it was. It's at least about six months old, but they they reskinned the menus and they look slick. Yeah, see, that's what I understood was that the M32 had its uh, the Midas's preamps, which uh, full disclosure, the M32 is what I have in uh, one of my units, so at least at least I'd be familiar with it. it. Takes a little bit of the research out of doing the bear ringer here for this little project, but uh, yes, yes, I agree. Dark mode is always better. Am I, am I saying it wrong? Ty type out phonetically how how it is. Behringer? Are you about to crumble my whole world? Or is this like an Aja AJA scenario? <laughs> oh man. What have I done to myself? Bear in G or Behringer? Beringer. Beringer. Okay, I, I can believe it. Beringer. Beringer. No. <laughs> okay. Well, that's news. Okay. Des <laughs> destinations. So, depending on. Our switcher, if it can do multi viewers, if it's one multi viewers, we're going to say probably at least two uh, multi viewers for our viewing pleasure. We have, of course, our encoder, since this is a web show. Encoder. And I would imagine at least RTMP capable kind of one of the standards. So we'll go with that. Uh, probably a couple record decks, right? Uh, maybe two SSD recorders. Recorders. Um, now, maybe popular or unpopular opinion, but um, and I don't, okay, so I'm not even sure that, I haven't looked recently. Can you still get the uh, the two slot Blackmagic SD recorders? I don't know. Or did they discontinue those? We could opt for SRT. It's open source, secure, and reliable. I have never heard of this. What is what is SRT? Explain that to me a little bit. Uh, <clears throat> and the reason I bring up the Black Magic ones is what I like about them is that they are not proprietary on what you give them as far as recording mediums. Because the, uh, the Aja, yeah, well, not the HyperDeck Minis, the HyperDeck Studios, I think, are the ones I'm thinking of. Um, the Minis are really good, too. Uh, black 
magic design. Let's go check them out. Not sponsored. <laughs> this is not sponsored by anybody. Uh, let's see here. Products. Uh, capture. Nope. Nope. Yeah, capture. Right? No. Recording. Why am I not seeing this? Video and audio monitoring, test, multi-viewer, routing, streaming, and coding, which we might visit later. Am I crazy? I'm so confused. Oh, it's right there in front of me. Just for you. <laughs> OK. Uh, oh, yeah, these guys, the Hyperdeck Extremes. That was not last NAB, but the, the previous one, I think, that they released that, or at least some version of that. Um, SRT stands for Secure Reliable Transport. It's made by, oh, you're talking for, uh, for encoding. This is me reading the chat. UDP, da, 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 da. Oh, interesting. Very interesting. I'll have to look more into that. SRT, huh? So as, as this channel grows and as you guys get to know me a little bit more, you will learn that my philosophy in all of this is I don't pretend to have all the answers. And that's what I tell, you know, when I'm teaching high school kids this stuff as well. Like the worst thing you can do to me when you're trying to present yourself as somebody who is knowledgeable in the industry is to try to BS me, right? Whenever there's something that I don't understand, I'm the first one to go ask somebody. And I'm not ashamed of that because there is so much out there in regards to all of this stuff. So um, it is okay to admit when you don't have teleprompter. Good point. Yes, we'll need teleprompters. Um, it is okay to admit when you don't have the knowledge. And I find that more respectable than anything um, because is the moment you try to pass off that you have some sort of knowledge and somebody can call you out on it, which they absolutely should, then it's it's very unflattering. We'll say that. Teleprompters, preferably ones that have um, a hardware ability to flip. Um, so not the Icon 1200s, unless they fix that. I don't know. Yes, that's, that's the statement of the year. Good engineer doesn't know everything. They just know where to find the answer. Could not agree more. <clears throat> uh, so yes, hardware flip. Oh, man, that just made me think. What if we made this all moss? Oh, no. <laughs> no. No, we're not doing MOSS today. So this will be standalone software. Uh, stand alone software. But that's something we could look at in, in a future stream. If you guys want, we can do a, a whole MOSS build. Uh, for those who don't know, MOSS Media Object Server. I think that's the acronym. Media object server, yeah, it's a uh, pretty standard, um, pretty standard. Wow, I just went brain dead. Uh, protocol used in uh, news environments, which uh, allows for the interconnectivity between transferring uh, data back and forth between, like, uh, well, if you're in automation, things like uh, OverDrive or uh, 
the NRCS, the newsroom control software, um, for building things like lower thirds or uh, video servers and putting that all linearly in a rundown. And then that gets transmitted into some sort of MOS gateway, which then distributes those commands, which allows you to do things like build all your graphics in the newsroom and that translates over, um, type in your script into your, uh, into your NRCS as well. And then that gets sent over to a prompter world. So there's, there's a lot of stuff there. <clears throat> So, teleprompters, hardware flip on the prompter would be great. So we'll have to see what the cameras support. So we obviously want to find a CCU that can uh, pool that hopefully I would, well, okay, so here's the thing. There's a lot of CCUs out there that still only carry standard definition composite signals for prompters. Um, and there's some that are HD because again, it's utilizing that bandwidth in that, uh, in that single cable going from the CCU to the uh, intercoms, yes, uh, to the camera itself. So they try to maintain uh, a lot of that thought process, a lot of that bandwidth. So. We'll have to see. Some prompters can, some, yeah, some will be HD, some will be standard def. So we'll look into that as well. How are we doing on time? <laughs> okay, we're only a half hour. We're still making pretty good leeway. Uh, yes, comms. So we're going to need comms, which will be good. We need, uh, oh man, depending on how many people. We're going to be doing so all right we'll we'll come back to that we'll come back to that because that's going to be figuring out how many people in the control room we're even going to have right <clears throat> let alone camera operators and if the cameras support uh so i kind of talked about the budget a little bit at the beginning um the budget is kind of going to be an arbitrary number at this point because without actually having the real-time feedback from people quoting me stuff, um, it's going to be kind of hard to put those numbers together. So we're going to say that we're trying to be budget friendly. Um, so if there's a choice between going with the most inexpensive and the most expensive, uh, especially quality wise, we're going to just try and shoot for the middle and, uh, that's that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Okay. Yes, comms to be determined. TBD. Okay, so this will probably be a good starting point. I'm sure we'll come back and add some stuff, but let's start looking at prerequisites. So as far as video switchers. Um, Top of my head, I know that the Black Magic Atom switchers would probably be good for this. A good amount of raw switchers would be good for this. Um, one I'm thinking about in particular is if we're trying to be budget friendly and we don't need that many inputs, could be a Carbonite Solo. Um, And, and of course, new tech. New tech would probably fit this bill as well. Um, <clears throat> yes, live graphics. We have that down here under our sources. Other sources? Yeah, character generator. Two channels of CG. Uh, possible audio and possible video. So let's start looking at switchers here. So let's pop over to Ross. Let's pop over to Newtech. 
I think I spelled that right. And we'll see how that loads. Uh, ooh, we could do a graphite too. I almost feel like that would be cheating. <laughs> uh, uh, the pressure. Um, let's look at the ultra. Let's see. 24 by 14. Ah, see, the crossover is a good call, but it's end of life. And I don't know where other than eBay I could get one because I don't think they have any left in B stock because that was end of life probably over six years ago. That is tempting, though. Well, oh, and I don't believe that did 1080p, which is what we're shooting for. Um, I know it went up to 1080i. That would be an interesting, can I search for it? <clears throat> crossover documentation, look at that. Or the 12, rather, crossover 12. Yeah, they had the 6, the 12, the solo, and the difference being, if I recall, the 6 and the 12 had custom controls. The solo did not, and the solo had its I.O. in the actual switcher part, and the 6 and 12 had frames? Man, you guys are making me think now. Oh, don't look at my login. Uh, I remember my login, but do you remember? Sure, we'll save that. <clears throat> okay, now I can bring this back. Uh, crossover 16. Let's see if this supported 1080p. I don't remember. I don't even think... But it was the car carbonite that started doing uh, the original carbonite that I think was doing support for PSF. Uh, da, 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 da. Switcher video format. Let's see. Standard def, of course. No, it didn't do P. 1080i up to 59.94. So that's out. It's a good thought, though. But you see here, we gave this arbitrary requirement that we have to fulfill. <laughs> so uh, no crossover. But the Carbonite, which was the predecessor to, sorry, the Carbonite, which was the predecessor to the crossover, and the Carbonite Black Solo, which if we look at its inputs, do, do, do six, three G, three HDMI, so that would be good for our computers. Um, we're shooting for 60p. because I don't even want to pretend like I can do all of the stuff for 50. <clears throat> solo and Solo 13 do 1080p. Solo and the Carbonite? Yeah, the Carbonite Solo does, but not the, not the crossover Solo, if that's what we're still talking about. So let's see, what were we talking about? Uh, at least six outputs, that's five 
and an HDMI, so that would be at least six. And 12, and a little room for growth. We could do that. Um, you know what? You might talk me into it. All right. Because I know this also has uh, frame syncs in it, which will be useful. I want more specifications. So oh, there they are, all technical specs. All right, let's see here. Da, 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 da. The custom controls are just awesome. Okay, make sure, what did we say here? At least two channels of DVE, tri-level sync out. Does this have a, pretty sure it does. Sync output. Reference input. Surely. One multi-viewer, frame syncs, yes. Two DVEs, perfect. Uh, storage, Ethernet reference. No sync out on the solo. So if we went with that, we would have to for sure get something to produce sync, which isn't the end of the world. Um, <clears throat> let's see over here. The TC1. It's a little slower on the load, isn't it? Uh, and what else were we talking about over here? The Ultra. Uh, so we can take a quick look at that while that's loading. Uh, this, all HDB and Cs. Uh, da, 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 tally, of course, AES audio, that is for the media wipes. But the other thing about the Solo and the Ultra is they have clip player. They have an actual uh, H.264 internal clip player built in too. Ah, uh, yeah. See, there's that no HDMI, so we would be... Okay. You're... I'm feeling it. It's going to be... If we go Ross, it's going to be a solo. Just for those HDMI inputs. Yeah. All right, this loaded. Let's see here. This is a little, probably a little bit more than what we need. Does also have the built in, yeah, this has built in clip player as well, I believe. Utech usually has everything built in, right? Yeah, integrated video servers, playback, replay, live editing. Inherently, my my overall knowledge of new tech switchers is significantly less than my knowledge of raw switchers. So that would definitely be an interesting interesting thing. Ah, uh, yeah, the Panasonics. Let's do a quick search on that. Uh, let's see. 
12G compatible, 3G. Single ME, that is going to make it a little harder to make our two boxes though, not impossible. It has a gen lock in, does it have a gen lock out? I'm trying to give everyone a fair chance here. Uh, single formats, 1080 K, 59.94. Can I see the back plane? Yes, I can. Okay, so we have our HDMI inputs, a couple 12G inputs that we won't be using, 12G out. Or I guess they're just 12G and everything below. So tally outs, reference the loop. I'm assuming that is in and out. Yep, four A's. We'll make that our last contender. We'll check out the 4A. Uh, da, 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 da. Standard 12G support. <laughs> For all of our quad link cameras we're gonna have. Oh no. Uh, Emmy light. Foray technology expands capabilities. Da, 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 preview. I've never used a 4A switcher before. One DVE transitions are not included. That's interesting. For more sophisticated flex key. All these trademark terminologies. Emulate FlexiKey. Special FlexiKey keyers is designed flexible reassignment. The only FlexiKey for FlexiKeys HD provided. That's an uh, interesting concept. 2.5 DBE wipes up to 4, 2.5. 2.5 D. What is 2.5D? Not, not quite 3D? The Atom Constellation, uh, was this, uh, yes, does have built-in frame syncs. That I do know. I think that the Constellation was not last NAB that didn't happen, but the previous NAB, I think they had introduced that one as well. Uh, Interesting. Very interesting. So this looks like a huh. To look more into that. Uh can I see the back plane? Maybe downloads. Ah, there we go. So it's got a frame. Ooh, here we go. All right, so these are obviously, I would assume, 12G spigots and or quad link and our couple HDMI outputs, but no HDMI inputs, which again would make this a little easier. All right, I'm going to say for the purposes of this, for our little web show, little web news show, we're going to go with the solo. So <clears throat> I'm going to do a uh, Ross Carbonite solo. And as we determined, solo 13, I should say, just for the little bit extra there. <laughs> Uh, HD hardware. It does seem like it's kind of a, a hard thing to come by. Is a nice, good picture of the back plane. Now, I have had, like, I have gotten products and they've sent me posters that I could put up in the office of, like, the product or the back plane. But then it's all folded. And 
that hurts my feelings because I would much rather have it rolled so I can actually do something with it, frame it or whatever. Uh, okay, so we're gonna do the solo 13, which will be uh, do, 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 13 ends. One each, oh, no, wait, ah, the solo. Nope, we're gonna do the solo. We want the three HDMI for those two PCs. Okay, so six 3G, three HDMI for a total of nine inputs. Where did my notepad document go? All right, so we're gonna do six SDI and three HDMI, HDMI. Work with me, keyboard. We can do this, you and I. <laughs> I'll put five SDI and one HDMI, which should be good too, because we have that one built-in multi-viewer. So that is handy. Now the, it doesn't have, it is only video monitoring. So if anyone wanted audio monitoring on that, uh, CAD files, yes. CAD files are great. Uh, da, 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 da. So we have the one multi viewer, which is handy. We know we have the two DVEs. We don't have the sync out. So that we're going to have to have a sync pulse generator. with tri-level. So there's that. Let's see, how about a video router? Um, video QC. Sign Multi-viewer is assignable on SDI 5 and or HDMI, but you don't have to assign a multi-viewer if you don't want. Correct. That sounds about right. So yes, we have the built-in multi-viewer and if we want audio monitoring, we can look at that. Which case we would have to do either an external if we want it in the multi-viewer, right? I'm not sold on that yet, um, but we'll see. Uh, frame syncs, yes, so we're good with that. I think we determined there were six frame syncs internal. Uh, yes. Frame sync frame converters. Excellent. So we know we have six of those. And we mentioned the multi viewer, we can output on the HDMI, which will save us a converter, which is excellent. Six plus four with assignable media stores. Yes, the media stores and the clip player. Love the clip player. So clip player, which is again H.264, H.264, and the media stores. Excellent. Plus we have the full ME and the two mini MEs, which we can use to build our two box effects, plus a chroma key. Oh man, chroma key. If we decide we're gonna have a green screen. Chroma wall, great. Okay, that, that's a good start. All right, video router. Um, video slash audio router. Again, that kind of comes back down to our audio if we are doing mostly analog, um, then we can feed everything from outputs of the mixer. And we're, how are we on time? About an hour in? Okay. Doesn't the Carbonite Solo come with Expression Designer? 
Yes. If you, yes, I believe that is still a running promotion. Um, so that would take care of the character generator if we were just worried about stills. Because that that is the one caveat, is it's great that you get expression designer, but the outputs of it go directly to the media stores of the Carbonite. So if you wanted like real time uh, motion graphics, right? That would have to be like a either an export and then loaded into the media stores, or you would have to get something with an actual output card that we would take in. So we definitely, definitely would be able to utilize that for you know some maybe like a, a station bug or something like that. So. Uh, or still graphic that we're pushing to like an onset monitor or something. So definitely some utility there. People looping the HDMI to trick the system to get real time graphics. For what? Looping the HDMI out. You'll have to walk me through that one. That that's a new one. That would be interesting. So, oh, I see what you're saying. So, huh. So they would set up like a, but it still wouldn't provide a fill key. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you would set up a virtual output channel on that second monitor and make it make the background green, use the chroma key or in the switcher. Interesting. You just can't have any green in your graphic. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, that's an interesting concept. You guys are clever. Very interesting. Now the solo, that, that would be kind of challenging with this, especially if we were using, because I think it's only one channel of chroma key, ultra chrome, right? Uh, so that would be a little tricky here. Yeah, one channel of ultra chrome. So if we were actually using a chroma key for our uh, weather or whatever, we would be fighting for that resource. So maybe definitely if we had a an ultra or, or a black or something like that. Oh yeah, definitely we'll get the job done for sure. That's, I never thought about doing that. That's pretty, uh, pretty slick. Um, okay, so we're gonna need a sync pulse generator, which I think actually black magic makes. I, I'll be honest, I love black magic gear for their throwdown gear. Like their converters, their DAs, their generators, um, and for pretty pretty quick monitoring and stuff like that. Um, it's just very useful and easy to get a hold of. Um, Bright Eye fifty six. Bright Eye fifty six. Let's see what you do. <clears throat> I'm gonna have so many tabs open. Oh, that's a cute little box. Let's see what you do. All right, all right. What? No, I, I don't wanna be on your VIP list right now. <laughs> uh, programmable outputs, analog audio. Oh, so does this do bars and tone as well? Surely. Oh, it's got word clock. Okay, okay, you're talking me into it. Remote guest Skype. Yes, we probably can do that with one of our uh, PCs that we're looking at doing. Um, does bars with motion test? Okay. Um, another option, and if we're gonna end up needing any type of distribution is, um, 
Uh, Cobalt makes a really nice black burst generator, um, bars and tones, open gear card. Um, if you guys have ever seen that, Cobalt Digital. Uh, let's see here. Products, open gear modular. Well, okay. Frame syncs, multi viewers, where? Signal routing, test tone, test tone reference, reference generators. Here we go. So, signal generator. Is this the one I'm thinking of? 3D dual signal moving box. Yeah. So this is this is another real handy little concept too. Is um, because it does the I would assume the ensemble has some sort of GUI to make all these changes. It's a USB port, comprehensive control from PC. So that would be. Hey, yeah, that would be handy, but I wondered, does it have like a TCP thing where you can do this uh, over the network? I didn't see a network port there. No. So you'd have to be at the uh, at the box, right? This is true. Practically speaking, you probably won't have to make too many adjustments. Um, but with dashboard, you should be able to set up alerts. So for whatever reason, if which I, this surely has to, right? There has to be a way that you can get an alert out of this if something drops or Would have to look. Would have to look. Okay. Um, I thought I saw another suggestion. Uh, BE fifty six. Yeah, and that's that's another thing. Is I think I think this card can be set up at least to a time server, um, I think. Certainly not GPS, but uh, maybe. Am I crazy? Can't even think of the acronym right now. NTP, is that right? National Time Protocol? NTP server, that sounds right. Yes, uh, Ross does have a sync pulse generator frame card uh, which, but I don't, does it do bars and tone? I don't remember. I know that their uh, SRG does, but that's I think gonna be a little bit much for what we're looking at right now. I don't I don't remember if they're Yeah. So that would be good just for sync, but also having word clock would be good, which this I don't think has word clock. Okay. And for those who don't know word clock is basically what Gen lock is for video is to audio, for digital audio, I should say. Um, okay. Okay. So I like this suggestion. That's going to be pretty handy. Yeah. Having the flexibility for all of this. Does it have a burn in for? for bar for uh, text by chance. 
do, 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 do. Hmm. Decisions, decisions. It does. Okay, great. Okay. All right, we're going to go with the ensemble until we <laughs> design ourselves into a hole. So, and again, keep in mind, this is me like kind of blindly <laughs> taking some of these suggestions. Uh, I haven't used this myself. Um, I don't know what its interface like. I don't interface is like, I don't know what its reliability is like. Just throwing that out there, but on paper so far, it looks good. And we'll get a little bit better of an idea too when we start uh, diagramming some of this stuff out. Do, 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 do. The 56 is only 1.5 gigabit. I just realized all these guys run mostly in network. Yeah, network switches, all that stuff. <laughs> this is so challenging. You guys are giving me like all these caveats. Oh, man. What have I done to myself? Why, why did I think this was a good idea? It's fun. This. <laughs> oh, man. So uh, you guys will have to let me know by the end of this if you really, truly enjoyed this, because we can do more fun projects like this. Um, so far, I'm having a blast. Um, OK, so we have an idea for an SPG for our signal pulse generator. Um, how many outputs does this have? Um, so we have two. So assuming that we're not going to be, can these be composite? That's a reference in. OK, so we're at least going to need a DA for this. Um, to get to all of our other stuff. Um, because I don't think the solo, no, we agreed the solo doesn't have any outputs. Yes. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely familiar with uh, Ross's uh, DAs for especially open gear, because we're definitely going to have an open gear frame. Let's, let's be honest with ourselves. We're, we're going to have an open gear frame. So I, ooh, let's see if I can remember the model number of this. Um, oh, man, don't tell me. Uh, uh, well, nope. I just put so much pressure on myself, and it's not coming to me. Um, is it the DEA? I, oh, look at that. I don't think that's the composite one, though. I think that's the SDI. Ah, we're so close. OK. Got to go look for the composite one. UDA, yes. Yes, of course. Uh, 8705. So that's a that's the what one by eight, very useful. Da, 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 da. Why does that not look like the most recent one, Mike? No, that's right. That is not the picture I'm used to seeing. Or maybe I'm crazy. It's been a while since I, and by a while, I mean probably like six months. Um, yeah, right? This this doesn't look right to me. That that looks kind of kind of generic. But yes, one by four analog audio or analog distribution amplifier. Um, but I know they make a two channel one too. 
Is this what I want? Or is this the same thing? B and C looping input for the R2 well back. Only four analog outputs are available when using the split room module. Right. So if we just get the the two the R2 well, then we'll have uh, eight. Eight out of that. So we'll okay. So we'll get an open gear frame. We'll slap one of those in there. We'll put that in kind of our grocery list here. Um, open gear frame. With the uh, R2L, R2L back. So we can get up to our eight channels there. OK, cool. So we've started an open gear frame, too. And uh, that'll be useful. See if we can manage to get everything out of one frame that we need. Um, all right. Uh, feeling good about this. So we got sync this uh, cameras. Oh boy. All right. Uh, <laughs> where did they go? Here they are. Three cameras with CCUs. All right. Now, this is where everyone's going to have an opinion, I'm sure. Um, so on my fly pack, I have JVCs. And in my truck, I have Hitachis. Um, and I both love them equally. Uh, again, that, that's the trick, is what is the budget? So without being, uh, without having people to be able to give me quotes on things, it's going to be hard to like uh, throw a, a solid budget number out there. So what I'm thinking is we're going to have to, you know, just say that we're being a tank, kind of budget friendly, right? We're not shooting for the moon here, but uh, um, Panasonic camcorders with silverbacks. Well, see, the other benefit of Hitachi cameras, um, newer ones anyways, uh, also have dashboard integration. So you can set up, if you didn't want to buy the physical uh, remote control panels, you could do it through dashboard. Now, as far as I'm aware, at least in my experiences, it's an either or. You can have both, but the last one that controls wins. So if you boot up um, your Hitachis and you take control with your remote control panel, that's going to take away control from your dashboard control and vice versa. Um, <laughs> yeah, budget conscious. Um, I don't know, per chain, thinking back to what I've spent before, with lenses, it's probably fair to say between, I don't know, 150 and 200K with lenses. Um, cameras are always going to be the most expensive part, but not the cameras themselves, but the glass. That's not always true. Don't listen to me. <laughs> it's changed so much. Uh, there's a lot of good deals out there. But uh, somebody gave a suggestion up here. Where was it? Panasonic camcorders with silverbacks. What is a silverback Panasonic? Silverback? I am not sure that's what we're talking about. Oh, the multi-dyne. Oh, 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 okay. Gotcha. Um, yes, okay. I know what you're talking about now. Um, huh, yeah. Are these, what, triax? They look like triax. Fiber. No. OK. So empty fiber, I assume? Yeah. Well, this is a nice looking data sheet. 
I remember looking at these at a NAB. Might have been a couple years ago. Um, it was at the same time I was also looking at telecast before they were. Now, I always get this wrong. Belden bought, no. <laughs> Grass Valley bought Telecast and then Belden. I don't remember. Somebody can correct me on that. All the, all the acquisitions there. But basically, when I initially uh, got my JVC cameras and uh, I got them with the Telecast backs, it was before Telecast was bought by anybody or... Um, Belden bought Telecast and Miranda and then Grass Valley. That's what it was. Yes. So I had my Telecast uh, Copperhead fiber chains um, before they were bought by Belden. And uh, I guess if I would have waited a year, I would have gotten the, the better ones, but I think I got the ones that were like right at the end. So I'm definitely familiar, I, the roundabout way of saying this is I'm definitely familiar with these uh, compatible uh, camera chain systems. Um, Multidyne's not part of anything, right? They're still independent. Um, let's see. So we got our 3G video, return, sync gen, Base station audio one and two, so that's nice. It's got some mic line level intercom program audio. So for prompter, if we were doing this, then SDI, HD, SDI. So I guess that's saying it can be standard def or high definition, I'm assuming. Yeah, recently acquired by Census Digital. Da, 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 da. Yeah. All right. All right. That's probably a pretty viable option for a camera chain. I have to look at. Oh, man. Again, I, I don't know what the price is which is always, again, assuming we're being budget conscious. It's always what the higher ups like to hear. Um, yeah, I'll have to look at the cameras. So that's an option. Um, even the, uh, oh, really? OK, so you can actually get them just straight ST fiber. Interesting. Five to six K? Five to six K for the whole chain? No. No. You're lying. I'm BH, really? Oh well. All right, then. I can't see the specs. Multidyne, so we're back to camera back fiber transceiver two way. Oh, wait, no, this that's not. Oh, I don't think that has the base station, though. The way that reads. Just the transceiver. Hmm. Does this have a part number? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Hmm. And yeah, maybe we'll maybe we'll look at something that's a little bit more kind of out of the box. Um, If I can spell I taught you to save my life. There you are. Uh, 
what are they? The S. Oh, I cannot remember. Model numbers. I think it's like. Let's just see what that comes up with. So the Black Magic Ursas, they are, correct me if I'm wrong, but in order to color or uh, in order to shade those, don't you need a Atom Switcher? Or is that has that changed? Or is that ever a thing? That's the model number I'm looking for. Thank you. Yeah, see, that's that's what I thought. Is that's kind of how they that's kind of how they sell that as a kind of a package deal. Is you need the uh, you need the switcher to shade. At least I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I don't know. I I honestly haven't looked at it uh, quite that often. Um, yeah. So this for for the sake of time, this might be a good. Uh, alternative with the kit and everything. So multi-camera cable. Yeah. Okay. So that's All right, we'll do this. We'll presume this. I have I have at least a little bit of a familiarity with them. And uh, I know there's only so many options. So the CUHD 1300, that has the UHD option. Uh, multi camera, uh, multi cable. That's I know that comes in, yeah, triax or fiber. Um, what do you guys think? Any preference, triax or fiber? Yeah, the HD five fifty. A fine product, and these are, yeah, these can be uh, two wire, four wire for intercom, I believe, four wire, three wire, two wire, three wire. Wow, uh, yeah, basically RTS and uh, clearcom capable. Now, I wonder if the new one you can actually switch that in the field. Um, Yeah, so we'll we'll go with the, the 5500 for our CCU for the sake of argument, and we'll keep. Um, yeah, there's there's the dashboard interface I was talking about. Um, yeah, so we'll we'll keep it, or you can get the master. Ah. Uh, We'll, we'll stick with the we'll stick with the GUI for now. Um, oh, that's good. Yeah, setting in the menu. So another thing that uh, I think these CCUs do is they do have a TCP port where you can uh, you can actually make those changes over changes changes over uh, a GUI. Or I know that you can do it through the picks out menu for sure. I just trying to remember if you can now do that all through a TCP client. I imagine you have to be able to. Okay. I'm sure one of you will tell me.
at least in my build, we did have the small RCPs. So we just did everything in the PIX output menu. Never got the dashboard working. <laughs> I didn't try very hard. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I know the um, I know the dashboard GUI does have the ability to trigger that PIX out menu. Uh, yeah, right here, the on-screen menu. So you can navigate through that as well if you are viewing that. So that's handy. OK. So we have our general cameras picked out. Ah, Robo camera. Why did I do this to myself? Uh, uh, what do you guys want for a Robo camera? Um, if, if it is, oh, what is the control protocol for that? Um, <laughs> Huey 150 or death. That's, yeah, Visca, thank you. Uh, Visca protocol. Yeah, the Carbonite does support Visca. Um, so we can control it that way. Um, if it's the Ross PTZ, um, I believe those also do Visca. Um, if not, depending on how robo you want to go, how robo, uh, there's the CAMBOT protocol. Let's take a look at these guys. The UE150s or death. <laughs> uh, all right, let's see. Is that what you sent me, the AW? UE, no, what am I looking Yeah, no, OK. Uh, yes, Pivot uses Visca. Um, da, 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 da. All right. Hope GSDI HDMI. Sometimes it's easier just to look. Uh, are these PoE power over Ethernet? Maybe they have a. I see that they have a obviously a power supply input, but I do like me some PoE. Oh, PoE plus plus. All right. Okay. Okay. Probably talk me into that. Again, without uh, specifically quoting the the quality or anything. We're just kind of going with specs for right now. Oh yeah, there it is. PoE plus um, plus. Let's see. Ambient operating humidity. That's unimportant. Uh, ooh, pearl white. I know we have frame syncs in our switcher, but I'm super curious. Does this have a reference input? Because that would be dope. Oh, it does. Oh, that's nice. OK. Tri-level composite? Surely that's on the specs. Of course, you guys are going to tell me. This is fun. <laughs> uh, Motorized 20x zoom conversion, ba ba ba, wide angle. Genlock, Genlock, Bueller, help, input. Yeah, okay, perfect. Okay. Well, it, see, Oh, it does both. I'm, I'm curious, why why would you uh, want to just stick with Black Burst? Um, I mean, if everything's going to be 1080p, it gives you that extra point of reference. Um, unless I'm being a total novice in something.
there that is true. There is some stuff that doesn't take tri level at this point. But I think our handy dandy. Uh, where did you go? This can do both, right? Maybe. One or the other. Ah, uh, yeah, see, that's true. That is true. Mira is still, uh, still tri-level, or uh, still bi-level. Yeah. That is true. <laughs> uh, I'll join the club. Um, okay, so did I put that in here? Robocam? Okay. Two PCs. If we wanted to get really ridiculous, um, Cobalt makes two, uh, they make a actual PC on an open gear card, which I have been dying to try out. But I haven't. You know what? This is my theoretical control room, and I want it. <laughs> All right, so we're going to do two Cobalt uh, PC open gear cards. Because I still think that is way overkill for what anybody would ever need, but it's such a cool concept to me. I don't know. Um, okay, progress. Progress. Where are we at? Hour and a half in, and we almost have our shopping list. Uh, intercoms. Uh, for something like this, hmm, mm, 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 probably just a uh, probably just an analog party line would be fine for this. Like, uh, not like a single party line, but you know, like Clearcom's uh, Encore stuff. Um, Studio Technologies Dante for Intercom. Um, yeah, that's what I'm thinking is the Encore would probably be pretty straightforward. The, um, they can do uh, their, their uh, oh, man, their master panel, I think it is, can do four party lines. It's got a little matrix switch in it. Digital party line, that's always an option, um, which is if we wanted to do ClearCom, that would be what? What is their digital? Eclipse? Is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Studio Tech. I'm not familiar with the Studio Tech stuff. Let's go to the Google box. Studio Tech, uh, is it, do you have a model number or is it just Studio Tech? Um, let's we can just do intercom system. Oh, it's all, oh, okay. Interesting, so it's all Dante. So does that mean that, yeah, I guess, I guess if it's Dante, you can intermix that with other Dante stuff? Model 5422. Okay, that is the discontinued one. Good to know. Oh, how could I forget IFB? So I guess this all has IFB in it too. 
Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, intercom belt pack, two wired, four wire, IFB, IFB intercom. Uh, is this what we're looking at? Yeah, it's also IFB, or is it all put together? <laughs> this is a new product for me. Give me some slack. Uh, man. <clears throat> two A versus two. What's the difference? Builds on the strengths of the popular two, and even improvements are assigned much of an extensive set of features and use used controls, users come up with inside really its improvement, in audio quality, reliability, and efficiency, smaller and lighter. Okay. Oops, I did not mean to close that tab. All right, so you are saying that there is, what am I looking at here? Broadcast, port, mobile. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. I'm picking up what you're putting down. Um, yeah, for those who don't know, who might be watching the audio, uh, Dante Protocol is a uh, effectively an audio over, uh, I forget what layer IP, but it's... Um, and I certainly don't have my Dante certification, but uh, Dante Intercom. Uh, no, we're not currently doing Dante for the rest of the audio. Um, yeah. And um, even more if you uh, convert that to fiber as well. So um, actually, that's what we do in our live truck. We have uh, we have a Dante audio interface card that goes into a uh, M32C, which is in our remote press box, which then uh, we convert to uh, ST fiber to go back to the truck to carry the audio Dante network back to the truck into the M32 mixers Dante expansion card, which has been very uh, reliable. OK, so audio interface, 45DC, 44D, 44DR, two-channel party line intercom interface designed for applications utilize two-channel analog party line technology. I guess this is, I'm trying to see an obvious difference here. Single, okay, so that's a single, that's dual, that's also a two channel analog line level audio to and from applications that utilize Dante network. 
So I guess the 44D or the 45DR. Oh, DRs for RTS. Okay. Interesting. All right. Well, I guess this is probably what we would need then. So we got our DC input. We have our network. Line outputs, line inputs, right? Looks great. Okay. And then we'll shop for all the belt packs and stuff. Uh, is there power on both pins? Uh, I would assume no. Yeah. If it's, if it's, uh, Do you analog line outputs? This line configure choice allows normal level of output signals plus four or zero dB. Da, 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 da. Okay, okay. Interesting. All right. All right. And that is Studio Technologies. And again, we'll look at belt packs and stuff. All right, where are we at? Probably time we should start diagramming some stuff. Um, oh, we didn't pick a router yet. Ah. Uh, all right, well, assuming that we're just routing video. Yeah, because we should have enough mixes, mix outputs on the mixer. If we go with the, the Midas or the Bear Ringer, then we can, uh, Oh, so many suggestions. Yeah, that's true. We could utilize the uh, Altrix for, why am I brain dead right now? Routing systems, Altrix. We could do the one RU frame which definitely for this size would cover us profusely for everything we would need to do. Um, slap in a couple of uh, Matty SFPs if we need that. Um, yeah, exactly. Then convert the Matty to Dante. Yeah, if you want to do that for sure. It definitely would give us the flexibility in the future. Um, all right. And just because we also have a solo, having the Ross talk protocol going between the uh, the Carbonite solo to trigger uh, uh, salvos is really handy and really easy. Uh, okay, yeah, we'll put a one RU Ultrix in, and that way, if the, the multi viewer, if we do want audio monitoring, then we can just license that up. Uh, all right. So we'll do an Altrix, Altrix, uh, which what, 36 by 36, give or take. Okay. 
All right, let's let's start diagramming. <laughs> That's going to kill you, isn't it? I want to call it Behringer. Uh, Behringer. Behringer. I have to make a sticky note now and put it on my computer. Behringer. Uh, I still call it Aja. I don't care if anyone calls it AJA. All right, what are we doing? <laughs> Making a document. Oh, man. So anyone who's watched my channel knows that I'm a big fan of Lucidchart. Um, again, not sponsored. Maybe someday. Um, I just like how easy it is and the fact that it's a web GUI and I can share it and do everything I want. I know, you know there's people who live and die by CAD and things like that, but... For most of the stuff that I do, I'm usually the only person who sees it, either that or my, you know, couple other engineers that work with me. So I don't have to be super official with this kind of stuff. Which I do think it would be fun to kind of go over some of my other designs with you guys, like for my other, uh, my other projects I've done, live units and things, but no, I, I just love this software. <laughs> oh, you're crazy. I, I could not process what's in my head without putting it down on paper. Um, so if you're able to do that, otherwise, I mean, more power to you. All right. So we know that we have our Altrix ins and outs. This is going to be essentially replicated here. And this is what I like to do. Instead of like just making arrows that go to nowhere that are labeled, I, I like to draw where they're going. So this will be represent representing our Altrix outputs. These will be our Altrix inputs from this side. We know that we're going to need a couple cameras. Uh, by a couple, I mean three. So we'll say that this is our, what model number were you? Oh, let's see here. It's all running together. Three cameras, CU HD 550s. So we know we're going to need three of these. Nope, stop. And the line centers. Oh, got the solo in there. Now oh, come back. Why? Why do you fight me? OK, so we have our cameras. Now, I don't think it's going to be anywhere. These have two. I know they have at least two video outputs. Um, and here's a fun little practice I like to do. So when you're designing systems like this, you always want to factor in some form of redundancy as as many places as you can. And the fact that these guys have two redundant video outputs of um, their, their camera source, what I like to do is I will run one to the switcher directly. Why aren't you lining up? And then also one as an input on the router. There, okay, so Lucidchart is interesting because there is a free version of it, um, but they cap you out on your shapes. So each one of these is considered a shape. And I forget what that limit is. I haven't used it in a long time. There are different levels that you can subscribe to on Lucidchart. Um, I think I have like the first tier, which gives you unlimited shapes and documents, but they have like enterprise levels where they allow like real time 
interfacing with other people and um, even if the pixel out that heads into patch bay worth yes I agree definitely will need uh, definitely will need the pix outs going somewhere um, yeah so we'll say we'll do this for sure and we'll run these into the router as inputs and we'll pull these back <clears throat> Okay, so yeah, the point point being is if the switcher decides it's going to die, then worst case scenario, we can still do our show and move on just by uh, uh, line cutting on the Altrix, which is also great because this particular router uh, can do clean switching, meaning that um, as long as it has reference, we can cut between these cameras on an output source and not risk a glitch switch. So everything will still be in time. So that's handy. Yes, which it does. So that is on point. Now the robo camera, which we had up somewhere. Curious, do you have a single output? I have a monitor out. Now, for whoever recommended, oh, you have an HDMI output. That's interesting. So for whoever recommended this, the monitor out, is that, I assume that just has like kind of the pix out stuff. Does anyone know what resolution is that is the top of their head? Can I run that to the router as like my backup? Um, you run your CG outputs through the router. You can. Um, it depends on what your application is for the CG. So, um, you know, if you have like a, a two channel character generator and one of those you want to be able to route dynamically through different destinations, then yes, it would absolutely make sense to put that through the router. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of uh, facilities that I've been to that it's a non question. They will run literally every video source possible into the router and put uh, patch, video patch bays on top of that. Um, uh, everything should be 1080, should be 1080i only for that camera output. Um, so maybe, which we can, we can certainly mix and match. Let's see here, Let's see if that jumps out at me. Uh, video output, video output, output. Nope, where are you? Here we go, okay. So 3G, 1B and C, uh, monitor out. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, for sure. Um, with uh, now, is the NDI on this a separate license, or does it? I would assume it would do that natively, right? I thought I saw like an asterisk here. NDI support. Yeah, you could absolutely use uh, the NDI input and dashboard for a monitoring solution for that. Um, I was just thinking for getting it to the router and to the switcher at the same time. So if we have, we'll pretend you're our RoboCam. Uh, where did you go, AW? So you are there. Yeah, yeah, we could do distribution amp. Do, do, do a little throwdown for that. So that would be 
Let's or can it simultaneously output HDMI and SDI? Because that would be another solution is we could just run HDMI. No, that's dumb. Ignore me because that's going to be way off. We would have to convert that. No, yeah. But we could, OK, hear me out on this one. We could convert the HDMI to SDI. And then there's our second SDI output. HDMI IO SFPs, yes, it does. But what I'm worried about is depending on where we put this, like if this is out in the studio somewhere, we only have a finite range or a cable length for HDMI before that croaks out. But I have I have seen those handy HDMI to fiber cables. And I know I'm not making that up. That does exist. Uh, HDMI fiber cable. I know I've seen these, maybe at NAB New York or something. Um, has anyone had any experience with these? Is this what I'm looking at? That doesn't look right. Yeah. Yeah, this guy. Something like that. Not necessarily the ones that have the looks like adapters, but Yeah. Yeah, we could do that. So if we we could okay, so some options. We could run where did that go? Oh, over here. <laughs> yes. So some options. We could either convert the HDMI to SDI and just run it that way. We could run HDMI out of this uh, over the HDMI fiber and then do with an SFP there or directly into here. I see no problem with any of those. Um, Excellent. You can use the 12G and 3G out simultaneously as 1080p. Oh, oh, well, that just makes this way easier then. OK, perfect. So if that's the case, then yes, we'll just do the same thing here. We'll run our SDI line directly there in the second SDI line into here. And all of a sudden, everything's great with the world. Good catch on that. So to this point in time, these are all still HD, SDI, aka 3G lines. So that's cool. The solo, which we said was do, do eight, six SDI inputs. So we've used four of those. So we're going to say that's going to be six SDI in. And we said three HDMI in. And if we want, we can get just a little bit neater here and start labeling these. Um, excellent. And kind of irrelevant, but relevant, we'll label these as well. And if we wanted to, which we probably should, let's pull up the documentation for these just so we have it in front of us. Uh, operational manual. So I can see specifically what these ports are named. Somewhere, there is a table of context. Is this all in French? No, OK. Whew. Uh, not up to date on my French. OK, so just HDSDI out one and two. OK, easy enough. I like it. So we can just say that that's just output one and output two. 
And if we wanted to, we can even break these up a bit for the sake of argument. So we'll say that that is one, two, one, two. <sighs> we, we, mercy buckets. I just offended every French person watching this. I am so sorry. It's what my dad does. He's weird like that. Uh, dad jokes. Okay. With that being said, um, probably what would be beneficial is to run some Alteryx outputs as returns into our cameras so that we have some flexibility there. Or, or, since really the only thing we would probably be sending out of those would be either solid cameras or mix outputs. <laughs> it's always a good time for a DA. Um, what is the output again? Six, five SDI. Okay. So this is where I would say we probably would just run all of these outputs into the router. So that's going to be six SDI outputs. Ooh, where are you going? Right, four, five. Sorry, all my lines aren't spaced evenly for everyone who's having an OCD panic attack right now. I understand. I usually go back and I clean that up later. Okay, and then we have one HDMI output, which I think we determined that for now is just going to be our multi viewer. If everyone's cool with that. They do have two video returns, but I don't know if we're necessarily going to need to utilize both. Um, there's, there's, comes a, with great power comes great responsibility kind of thing. Just because you can <laughs> doesn't mean you should. Um, yeah, so we'll pull those off of the Alteryx and we will make these outputs as well. Uh, just so we have some flexibility there and certainly no need for a return on our RoboCam because nobody is there to see it. Uh... <laughs> well, we do have a little bit overkill with our Alteryx outputs right now, so we certainly could. Um, or we could leave it open for a patch somewhere down the line. Who knows? Um... Now, uh, for me, I usually just send program. Um, but if we wanted the multi-viewer in the router, which we actually probably do, then we could either assign that to SDI 5, I think it was, or we could convert the HDMI. Um, I don't remember off the top of my head if that's simultaneous or not. Um, yeah, it's, um, yeah. So there's certainly, there's certainly not one size fits all when it comes to what you could do here. Um, in terms of what the camera operators need to see. So I would say we could definitely, if we're pulling it off the router, it's gonna give us a lot more flexibility anyways. And if we wanted to, we could, I need to see if the solo, because I don't remember if it's an either or with the multi-viewer, if that is either SDI or HDMI, or it can be simultaneous. If that's the case, then we might need to, uh, yes, there, the idea is that there's going to be prompters in the studio. So that is another output that we need to look at, um, or I should say input 
on the CCU side of things. Um, those are our returns. Analog. So, okay, so here's where I was saying this is one of those. It, it is or it isn't. So it appears that the CCUs we have chosen have analog inputs for their prompters. So we want to make sure we pick a, a prompter system that can support that, can support an analog input, shy of throwing a bunch of up-down converters, which ain't nobody want to do. Um, so yeah, things to consider. Um, okay, feeling good about that, at least for our SDI video at this point. Um, 3G video chain. Can be on SDI out five and HDMI. Perfect. Okay. So then the question comes do we want to necessarily burn both outputs for the multi viewer for the sake of flexibility? Or do we get a little box which has a HDMI to HDSDI converter with an HDMI loop out and then just utilize the single output because it only has one multi-viewer uh, config. So what that would look like is something like this, an HDMI to HDSDI. And then we could bring that there, bring that there, and then loop the HDMI back out into our HDMI monitor. So there's that possibility. You are correct. See, this is why I have you guys here. Six total, five SDI. No, outs, outs, what am I talking about? Just kidding. Yes. So this is something we could do because I'm pretty sure Decimator makes this exact box. Um, it would create another point of failure. Um, but worst case scenario is if we have the possibility that we can also output the multi-viewer here, we have a contingency. So um, this, we could always, worst case scenario, flip this straight into the monitor and then swap this. And we could even build a custom control to do that as well, uh, a macro on the switcher. Um, one press, it would... Uh, send the multi-viewer out of this output. And then uh, if our monitor in the control room was strictly HDMI, then we could build in that contingency there. Um, but I guess, again, this, this is just utilizing so we uh, could have this freed up to be another output source without having to burn both of these 100% of the time for the HDMI output. Um, <laughs> yeah, I agree. There is always that. Um, all right, I'll let you guys pick. How do you want to do this? Do you want to use the HDMI output and convert it to SDI? Or do you want to use both output 5 and HDMI as the multi-viewer for redundancy purposes? You could use the HDMI as an aux out, but what are we aux outing it to? Is it an onset monitor? I mean, that would work for me. Again, just uh, depends what we want to do. Um, thoughts, suggestions? 
I sip my coffee. Oh, that coffee's cold. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Oh, man. Uh, what other use would possible for output five? Well, since it's all going into the router, um, we know that we have uh, record decks that we want, and we have a, where do my destinations go? I said two multi-viewers, one multi-viewer. We have an encoder we need to feed. We have two recorders we need to feed. One which could be uh, a dirty feed with graphics and stuff. And if we wanted to, an ISO or a clean feed or something like that. Uh, yes, that's also a point in that column. So if we pull out the... Uh, if we run this into a converter, we can get analog audio out of the HDMI. Um, uh, let's see, using the will strip, strip audio and ancillary. With the solo, yes, using a frame sync frame converter. Uh, All right, here's what I'm thinking. Um, where is the Where's the solo? Did I close it? I closed. Uh, da, 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 production switchers. Solo. New tab. All the tabs. Let's just verify something. So we're going with the solo and We want to be sure. So yeah, the AES digital output is specifically for the clip player, which we do want. Um, so we'll probably have to convert that at some point. Uh, okay. Let's let's make sure that this actually is a thing. I know it is. Um, uh, not specifically the MDHX, but the decimator uh, HDMI to SDI. Let's make sure this does what I want it to do. Uh, that uh, I don't remember the model number, so HDMI to SDI bidirectional. Does that have the loop out? I think that does. Yes, HDMI output, HDMI input. Why can't you just show me the side of it? <laughs> ah, pet peeve. Uh, okay, HDMI input to, I'm assuming that can be which you know what they say about assuming, uh, that that can be looped out. Um, Aja has an HDMI to SDI converter OG card. Yeah, pretty much uh, that's the comparison, um, skipping that one single converter, yeah. Um, so if you wanted to get it to S or uh, 3D, SDI for the flexibility of having it in the router. Um, so we're just going to make a decision here. We're going to cut that out. And this is just going to go straight to a monitor. And we're going to use this for our multi viewer as well. Um, because unless we get a HD SDI monitor anyways, 
actually, oh, the decisions. All right, that's okay. This is the multi viewer. We're calling it now. This is the MV. It'll go into the router, and then the monitor that we get for our multi viewer will just be a uh, SDI compatible. So no conversion needed. It'll just be direct. And then this little HDMI guy we'll find a home for later. If anything, it'll just be uh, the new Blackmagic Micro has a loop through. OK, I like it. All right. Uh, thought process, what are we doing? Right, <laughs> designing a control room. Oh, man, why is my coffee cold? Uh, it's the worst. OK, so we have. Uh, Still determining our HDSDI outputs. We have our cameras. We never picked a character generator, but for the way this is going, we're going to uh, just opt in for like an expression go. Um, expression go or the 1RU expression, um, which would be over here. Uh, and we'll make it an expression studio for the two channels, the scripting, and all of the fun features. So yes, 1RU will be great. We like conserving rack space. Um, both have a bypass relay, which is great. I'm excited that's going to work. So we're going to do a, can I cut? oh, that's part of the text. Um, make sure there's nothing I'm missing here. Studio, we did say we want two channels, so it won't be an SCE. For anyone who's ever was super curious, single channel edition is what that stands for. Um, and it's essentially everything the expression studio is minus a channel, which can be upgraded. Um, so we'll go with a Studio 1RU for that. So that's going to be a uh, two-channel. Yeah. So it bounce back to here. And ooh, of course, we did go with a solo. So we're up to four. Well, maybe we'll do a Studio SCE. We'll do a single channel for now. Um, just comes with the name of the game here. Need to conserve. Plus, we'll have the expression live inputs if we need like a backup channel. So we'll call this our expression studio uh, SCE in case we ever do need to upgrade. So that'll be an input. Just kidding. That's going to be two inputs. Oh my god, what am I thinking? Because that's key fill. Uh, Yeah. So this will be input five <clears throat> and input six, respectfully, which we could kill two birds with one stone and we could. <laughs> uh, I know. I, I did mention for anyone who's like now just watching this, I did not come into this with a plan. <laughs> so uh, this is all completely impromptu. So that's exciting. So, all right. And if we want, we can get the clip server option here. So we could utilize the multiple layers in expression. So we'll just say that we're also doing clips out of that. Plus we'll have the internal clip player, which will be great. So that's technically two channels of clips. Um, and then we still have our three HDMI inputs, which two of which we said were going to be from our uh, PCs, which I said I wanted the desktop open gear cards from Cobalt because reasons. It's a uh, no particular reason other than I think that they're super cool. Uh, I think you can still get them.
maybe. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, that. It is so overkill. I love it. I've always wanted to get one and just have it. Okay, so put that in there. So we're going to have two of those. It's such a... It's the thing that you know that you never needed, but want anyways. And if money wasn't an option, or I should say not an option, but if money wasn't a factor, I just think they're so stupid cool. Where did it go? That one. Yeah, for no other reason. Okay, so that'll be HDMI in one. Yeah, that's what it is. It's an entire desktop PC. Desktop. It's an entire PC just baked onto an open gear card. Um, so, like, if you wanted to, you could totally have your open gear frame and your dashboard computer literally in one unit, uh, which is like outstanding for things like uh, a fly pack concept. Um, but at the same time, like mini computers anymore are nothing. So like what they, I forget I, what the they were charging for it, but it was just, I felt like it was a little overpriced for like what it was when you could get a mini PC for way less, but it was still, still a cool concept and I love it. Um, yeah, so we'll have two of those. And again, this could be a source for like uh, Skype. This could be a source for another video conferencing type thing or just pulling up uh, clips. Uh, copyright, of course, uh, compliant. Don't need to be breaking no rules. And then we have that one other HDMI input that we can always use for something else. Should we need it? Cool. So that's our six inputs, our three HDMI inputs. All of our outputs are going to the router, which for sure one of these will be like a program feed. Um, <laughs> okay, so pick your battles. <laughs> Budget conscious. These, these are probably not the most budget conscious, but they are something I've always wanted to do. So yeah, we're going with them. Um, okay. Instant playback for that last HDMI. For a news web show, um, I'm not sure that we really need instant playback or replay, assuming that that's what that's what you're talking about. Um, uh, Yeah, you guys think on that. Think on the 30 HDMI. Our video recorder loop back to switcher. Video recorder loop back to switcher. Oh, I see what you're saying. So one of our decks, just for like a preview or a, um, or not even a preview, but if you wanted to play back an SSD, okay. Okay, I could get on board with that. 
Um, but yeah, especially if we went with one of the uh, the hyper decks, that could uh, okay. Yeah, I like that. We'll throw a hyperdeck uh, input in there, HDMI. What version of hyperdeck? I don't know. But you best believe, why do the arrows do that? Whoops, that's not the arrow I want. There we go. We'll throw that in for good measure. Uh, okay. Feeling good. So let's see here. Other outputs. So we have our returns coming in here. So our camera operators can press their magical return buttons and see something exciting. And we do have the second returns if we need them which I'm sure we have enough outputs. We have 36, did I say? 36 by 36, yeah. Okay, fine. We'll wire the other returns. So each one of these will get two returns. Uh, how do I wanna do this? How about that? Except not that. And this is why we label stuff. But for what it's worth, it's not looking, get in there. Stop fighting me. See, two can play at that game. Okay, so return one. Of course, this would technically be return one as well. Uh, return two, return one and two respectfully. So we have flexibility there. Excellent. And we'll make this output one, output two, output three, four, five, six. Great. Okay. Again, that doesn't need one. The studio does have an input. So we can run that here. So that'll have a, uh, I think it's just in. And because we're SCE, uh, single channel, that'll be a single input. And these won't have video inputs. Hyperdeck will more than likely have an SDI input, which we can feed as well. And for that matter, we did say we wanted two decks. And the one will just be record only. How will you get your program out to your desktop for remote guests? You're talking if we do a Skype scenario. Okay, work with me. Uh, you tap. That's what we'll do. So Aja makes, uh, if you guys have seen Elgato's, uh, basically HDMI to blah, HDMI to USB with a little, um, which basically takes a HDMI source and has a chipset in it to make it into a webcam. Um, so Aja makes one that is, they have an HDMI version and they have a SDI version. So HDMI in, USB, and then your uh, computer will use that as a webcam driver. 
So what we can do is we can stick to UTAPs, the uh, SDI version. Yeah, there it is. To get that for our uh, sources. Uh, yeah, here we go. SDI in, and it even has an SDI loop out if you want. Um, yeah, so that, that'll solve that problem. And those can be two outputs of the router as well. So how are we looking here? Okay, let's make this not look as terrible. This is what I would typically do so that these are all a little straighter. Even if they're not the most spaced out accordingly, at least the uh, lines are straighter, easier to follow. Well, something like that. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty much what it boils down to. You tap. Or you can get a shelf. You can get a shelf for your rack, and you can mount them to your rack. Uh, which is also an option. Whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. Paste. There we go. There we go. Oh, that is slightly off, and that is annoying. We'll go this way. That is not the correct direction of those arrows. I will change that momentarily. Why are you like bolder than the other one? What happened to you? There we go. Okay. Excellent. So we have our UTAPs. And just so we remember, these do have a, I should mark that this is USB for anyone paying attention. USB and these have a loop out, have a loop out, which I will just do something like that so I don't forget in case I need them. So this is Lucidchart, um, for, uh, for those wondering. Uh, it is a, uh, they have a free version of uh, thought process. They have a free version, but they also have paid versions. And uh, I use it for my diagramming and things like that. But you can use it from making floor plans to uh, flow charts, thought diagrams, all that kind of stuff. Um, but I like using it for my diagrams. All right, so we have Hyperdex, which we haven't decided which Hyperdeck yet, which is fine. Um, this we can probably clean up a little bit. One thing I wish you could do is like select multiple arrows and like Maybe you can do this. Maybe I'm just dumb. No. OK. Yeah, so every time I like make one of my uh, pieces bigger, I have to like redo these lines, which, mind you, is tedious. But it's just a process that I've come to know and love. Unless, again, there's an easier way to do this, in which case, if you guys know that, you would be my heroes. But alternatively, this is what we're going with. All right, that is about cleaned up there. Good to hear. Uh, all right, so that should be all of our sources, right? I think we're making pretty good time. Two SSD recorders, oh, our encoder. So that is going to be downstream of the router as well. Um, 
So encoder wise, there are so many options we can use for an encoder. Um, I know Ross makes a open gear card encoder, which they make two of them actually. I think it's the MDK and SDK. View all solutions. Uh, da, da, da. IP solutions. No. False. Um, what am I missing? Uh, is it not categorized? MDK, MDK. No, that's the logo inserter. SDK. Something. I'm. I know I'm not making this up. Uh, that is not what I want. Also not what I want. Uh, stream. Wow, this is embarrassing. Where is this card? I'm going to go with an Aja Hilo here in a second. If that even does 1080p, I don't even know if I'm sure it does. Uh, Wow, I must be crazy. <clears throat> Ross Open Gear uh, streaming card. MFC? No, that's the controller card. OK, I know this exists. I have one. Here, look at my other diagrams. Um, so that would be, that would be in my Where are you? Intercom, sync, mux. There you are. What is the name of this card? Uh, there you are. SDE. I am not making this up. Okay, that wasn't helpful. Are they are they not a thing anymore? Surely. Do a search on their website. All right, well, interesting.
Okay, we are going to go look at Aja Hilo. Because this is a fun little box. Or does anyone know of any other uh, streaming modules that would work in uh, Open Gear? I think does Decimator make one. Oh, what are you? That's a multi viewer. I don't know. All right, for the sake of argument, Aja Hilo. Which I have used. Just make sure it does 1080p. Uh, yes, perfect. OK, so that's going to be our streaming card. Throw down. Whatever you want to say. Ooh, actually, that's what we can use HDMI for. Um, because, 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 because that has an HDMI input. Ah, there you go. See? Look at us being effective. We need to be as cost effective as possible in order to buy those open gear desktop cards. That's that's what it's really all about. Save money so you can splurge money. So that's what we'll do. We will borrow this for the size, and this is going to be Aja Elo. And we're going to put that right there. All right. Excellent. So that takes care of that. OK, uh, multi viewer, which is coming through here. So that's going to have to be one of our destinations here. So we will, again, borrow this. We'll just call this a uh, uh, TD. Technical Director Multi Viewer Monitor. Okay, excellent. And top of my head, other than the prompter, which will probably be its own standalone computer, anyways, and analog. So it wouldn't really have a place in here anyways, since we're doing our SDI chain. But I think, unless you guys see anything I am abruptly missing, yeah, clip playback monitor. That'd probably be good to have. So that is where if we wanted to, since this is going to be clips, this is where I probably would say, yeah, and we probably want a DA in between here. Uh, so we could DA this for some monitoring. Um, SDI loop to the matrix. Yes, you could absolutely do that as well. That way we would have it into the router. HDMI loop, yes. <laughs> I don't know, seventy dollars. Gonna have all the money for my uh, desktop cards. Um, yeah, so you're saying we could take the loop out of this into the Altrix, and uh, at that point. We might as well have the HDMI SFPs for this, which I still believe are a thing. So instead of getting a converter, we could take the loop out of this directly into here, into HDMI SFP1, we'll call it, just for the sake of argument. I like it.
that is also a great question. I think this has a, hey, look at the back plane. I think it has a, an analog input. Yes, it does. So yeah, we haven't really, um, but what we can do is because this has a two channel audio encoder kind of built into it, we can take analog quarter inch, quarter inch, eighth inch input, and we can set that to be our audio source straight out of the uh, Riders hybrid with VO and audio. Yes, that is. Yes, we can also mux and demux on the Altrix. That is true. Um, ooh, decisions. Where is my Altrix page? Running systems. I know what I'm doing. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Okay, so we will pursue that momentarily. But where are we at? Oh, almost halfway through. Oh, time flies. Um, uh, yeah, I think we can start on audio a bit here. We can always bounce back to this if we need to, but this is definitely a good start. Um, so let's go back to our documents. Oh, I don't want to make something from a template. Oh, why? I just want a blank document. All right, so I think you guys wanted the... Uh, Bear Eager, however you people want to say it, Bearinger, Bear, Bear, whatever. <laughs> I swear. All right. Um, My out can only be embedded from the solo with Clip Player Media Store. Bearing, bear ringer, bear ringer, ringer, ringer. See that? All right, I'm making a note. Bear ring, ger. It's the it's the it's the B H or the be, bear like like the paint you know like bear paint like a bear ringer no <laughs> debate for another time I'll let you guys argue that one out okay so we want to look at the X thirty two. Ah, sweet water. All right. Where is the back plane? Excellent. Can I zoom in without breaking the world? Yes, I can. All right. Standard. Cool. 16 out and 32 in. I'm happy with that. Control room monitoring. 
everything's right with the world, walks in, very exciting. Okay, so I don't think we're going to be at the level where we really need an audio patch panel to go with this. Um, there are people who will fight me to the end of the earth on that argument that there should always be an audio patch panel. Um, the only reason I ever have used an audio patch is when I have more sources than inputs. Um, but people like the flexibility that you can, you know, still move sources around without having to go in and do that uh, digitally on the fader strips. Um, So there's that argument. Oops, that didn't work, did it? X32. All right, so we know that we want uh, some microphones. And we can do, I'm really a kind of wired when you can, wireless when you can't, but I think in this scenario, we're probably safe. We'll just put for our lavalier microphones some uh, receivers. And uh, what do you guys like to use for your mics? I'm, I'm kind of a Sennheiser kind of guy myself. Um, Yeah, see, that's that's totally a thing. I and I'm not arguing against that. I think that's also great as well. Having uh, having everything hit a patch is definitely gives you a level of flexibility that you would not have otherwise. Uh, for this type of quick build, I think we're going to forego it for now. Um, but just to give you guys like a little bit of a under not understanding but a little bit of a glimpse um in my live truck i definitely utilize some audio patch panels in between my mixer my sources and destinations and everything like that so big fan um that could be a whole video in of itself but uh, yeah, yeah, gives you that flexibility for sure. Um, the question is, can I spell Sennheiser? I don't have to. Google is there for me. All right, so let's do a Sennheiser Lav Wireless. Let's see what we got from Mike Kits. I want, let's see here. Yes, I will accept your cookies. That's fine. <laughs> yes. It could be a round table discussion, philosophy of patch panels. I'm feeling it. I think I mentioned in my one video, I wanted to do like a, a philosophical discussion on uh, builds themselves, balancing uh, redundancy versus budget versus uh, points of failure and just how other engineers approach it. Because it is truly not a one size fits all scenario. And people do come to the table with some really unique opinions on you know what their take is and uh what they find to be more what's the word uh pertinent no beneficial advantageous i don't know but uh there are some things all right so we definitely want uh uh, for our talent microphones, we want unidirectional. 
That is omnidirectional. I literally said uni and I clicked on omni. Unless you want to take the, the time to like phase all the microphones out from each other. Um, Do, 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 do. Yeah, that would work for a microphone, cardioid. You know, uh, Jay, you're definitely not the first person to suggest that. And it has been a consideration. Um, especially with the way the world is now that everything's kind of moving to like that kind of format. Um, hey, if the support is there, I'd be willing to willing to do it and bring in, you know, guests remotely. And I, I think, uh, I think we have the technology, we can make that work. Um, okay, so what was uh, kits, right? Uh, presenters, moderators? Uh, what are you? Do you have, what is your microphone? Do you come with? Now I will also be the first person to um, <laughs> so, okay, funny story about the, um, about my system. So when I kind of decided I was going to do this live stream on a whim, I looked at my computer that I had in the office and I'm like, well, I built this PC back in 2006 as a gaming PC and... <laughs> Although I can upgrade the processor, um, it, it was choking on pretty much everything I was doing. It was pretty bad. Um, the motherboard, which was an Asus uh, Striker Extreme, could only handle eight gigs of RAM. That's what it capped out at. So I'm sitting here and I'm like trying to set this up, the test for live stream, and I'm like, this is not going to work. I've already committed to this. I need to go get a better computer. So uh, hopefully it doesn't choke on me. I think that'll be. <laughs> so far, things have been smooth. I mean, you guys are the ones watching. You tell me if everything's been smooth. But hopefully everything is A-OK. -okay. Um, all right. I think this little kit will work without really looking at everything in too much detail. Um, rugged all, blah, 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 blah. Lavalier, everything frequency looked normal. UHF, 100 meters. Yeah, so we'll get a couple of these. By a couple, I mean three. <clears throat> That is always good to hear. Ooh, no. Okay. Let's try that again. So pro tip, uh, control shift V will always paste something while removing its style. Um, I'm sure everybody knew that. And if you didn't know that, now you know that. Um, okay. So this will be our inputs one through three. And I think I looked at that and that's XLR, I'm sure, right? Has to be. Yes, okay. All right, so those will be our inputs there. And I think I mentioned a wireless microphone, which I should still be able to use this pack, uh, but with a wireless, maybe an adapter to stick on just a 
SM58. Or is that the wireless? Wait. Nope, that's not what I want. Not what I want. That's what I want. So, thank you. I still have people in the office this late. I am shocked. Okay. Uh, yeah, this, this, we should just be able to get another microphone with this. Hey, thanks for joining. Appreciate it. Uh, so thought process, DJ headphones, that's exciting. Uh, wired microphones, wireless systems. Is that not a hyperlink? Okay. No, I know that. Yeah, that would work. Uh, also UHF, because it's, I think, the same receiver. And uh, oh, that's interesting. So it's just a screw on uh, screw on head for your pickup pattern. I'm sure that's probably been a thing for years. And why am I just now learning that this is a thing? That is entirely exciting. All right. For all those times you need to change your pickup pattern on the fly, which is probably more often than not. Now, I will be the first to admit, when I started uh, my life in all of this, I was a video guy first and learned uh, audio second. That is a great question. Um, with the UHF bands, specifically in broadcast, I don't know without looking. Um, I think so long as they're not stepping on each other's toes, really, I don't think there's a... Uh, What, well, everything needs to be in that um, unlicensed band um, within UHF. Licensed? No, it would be unlicensed. So you're going to want to keep everything. And again, what that is off the top of my head, I don't remember without looking up the, the spectrum range. Um, but for instance, there's uh, a lot of uh, public safety stuff that's still using uh, UHF in certain reserved fields uh, in, in the spectrum. Um, so that would definitely have to be a Google search for me. I did it again. There we go. OK. <clears throat> And I th think what I'm going to do here is we are now halfway through what this process is going to be. Just uh, I'm going to go away just for a few minutes just to uh, refill my water bottle and everything. So give me about five. I'm going to put my uh, thing up, which is going to be backwards, I'm sure. Is that backwards? Or is that right? That's probably backwards. Because OBS hates me. So I'm going to flip this. Now that's probably correct.
Okay, so that's probably correct. All right, give me five to 10, I'll be back and we will continue the audio portion of this.
Okay. So, where were we? Right. Audio stuff. Okay. So, as we mentioned, this guy has 36 inputs and 16 outputs. So, we know we're going to have these. And our expression, which is also going to have our clips, we're going to need audio out of this. Um, now, Oh, also, I mean, okay, so our cameras do have audio inputs on them, but this might be one of those situations like just because you can doesn't mean you should. They're just going to be in the studio anyways, and it's not like we really need natural sound of the studio, so you might forgo those. Um, we can... If you want to do talkback speakers, that's always fun. Uh, so we could do talkback from the audio mixer itself. I believe it has, what, two channels of talkback, right? And that we could pull directly out of uh, and assign to a mix, which is somewhere. I did have this up. I closed it. Good talk. Uh, I'm pretty sure it does. We'll assume it does. And then we'll come back to that. But yes, we can do that. And I can tell already this is going to have to be larger. So we're just going to go ahead and do that before I get too crazy with this and have to change all my other lines. Okay, great. All right, so our main outs, which of course is gonna be our main mix, which we're going to need to get into our helo at some point. So this had come up about what is gonna be the best way to do this. Well, we can take our balanced lines out and we could embed them into our HDMI stream here at this point. So this could be our injection point. That didn't work. There we go. So we could do that which might be a good point if we wanted to. I'm curious, why can't I see the back plane of this? Why are you hiding? I swear I was just looking at this. Those are stage boxes. Um, okay, we're going to cheat. We're going to go to images. Nope, that is also a stage box. Uh, yeah. There it is. And took me back here. Open in new tab. All the tabs. Here we go. Okay, let's see what we have. For options, uh, let's see. We can take out could take it out of an aux, and we could do our RCA left right into quarter inch, but again, that's going to be probably hmm. 
Hmm. How do we want to do this? Well, we have digital audio out here, which we could do. We could, okay. We could get a impedance transformer and get that to 75 ohms and then run it into the helo. And then I think, I think the helo, will it let us pick embedded audio from SDI and video from HDMI? That doesn't sound like that's possible. Um, but if it's not, then we can still take the HDMI from the switcher and still embed the digital audio with an embedder that way out of the digital out. So So what we would have to do if we did it that way is I'm pretty sure these mixers have the ability that you can add delay to an output. You could, yes. So the question being, if we, so you guys are saying you would want to see it more done Yeah, yeah, I'm feeling that. That's a good point. We could get the Matty card. Um, in which case then This couldn't be direct anymore if we were going to use the Altrix to embed. We would have to pull out, uh, well, we'd have to obviously get audio into the Altrix via the MATI card, embed it into program going into the Altrix, and then ultimately this is what would happen. which we can do. In which case, So fun reading everyone's input. There's always more than one way. Yeah, okay. So, This kind of brings us back to that other 
point is what we could do is just to get it into the Altrix, we could just take this HDMI here and again, run it into a HDMI SFP. <clears throat> so we'd have two of those. And we wouldn't even really need this one, honestly. That would be just more for like, a, again, a loop out preview. So we might, uh, we might ax that one. It's not, you could run, I don't know that specifically time code, but you would probably want, so here's the thing is from my, what I remember is the Behringer, or as you guys say, Behringer, Behringer, sure, whatever, the B mixer um, can produce its own word clock. Uh, it can internally do that, or uh, any interface card that you put in it can also generate that card or generate that uh, that word clock. At least the Dante card can. I'm pretty sure. So um, what we could do is we could use the uh, use the mixer to produce that word clock um, and sync the card, the Matty card, assuming. And then uh, that should be able to provide the word clock everywhere else. Um, X Matty. Oh, that is super zoomed. Um, so it's a little expansion card that goes into the back and replaces the default uh, USB audio interface for your standard uh, PC. which I'm almost certain this would have to require some sort of word clock, right? My experience with Maddie is not as high as it is with Dante. Maybe it doesn't. Huh. All right. Well, we'll just assume that that is what we're going to do, is we are going to have our Manny card, and that is going to interface with our Ultrix. Hmm. 
don't know if there's a better way I can visualize that or not. Maybe first of all, why not fighting the arrows? That's what we'll do. We'll just kind of click that right onto there. And then getting that into the Alteryx, um, that is a SFP as well, right? For the MADI interface? Pretty sure it is. Yeah. Okay. And with the two RU, or I'm sorry, one RU decked out, then that should still be four SFPs, I believe. Without looking at the back, I'm sure it tells me somewhere. Yeah, one per card. Yeah, okay. Neat. So that will go to one of our SFPs there, and that will be essentially bi directional. <clears throat> so that'll give us a little flexibility there, except you are not a bearing her, you are an ultras. Cool. Now that's uh, all 32 channels or 16 channels that it can get into the Alteryx with Maddie um, with a single SFP. D embed 16 channels of audio on every video input, embed up to 16 channels of audio, blah, 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 discrete audio. Uh, SFP Matty Coax, 64 by 64, jolly good. So we won't even hit that cap with our 32. Cool. Uh, 64 by 64. Okay, so that'll help with that. And then again, what we'll do is we'll run that into our SFP there. This will be more over here then, and that's where our embedded audio will happen. Perfect. So I'm actually going to make this a slightly different color just so that we know that this is going to be embedded ultimately. In which case, technically, a lot of this stuff can be too. Um, going forward, so even, even that could be, but this for sure. So that's how we're going to do that. And then that's going to be HDSDI. Perfect. Feeling good. And I'm tired of looking at blank diagrams, so we're going to rename this uh, audio. Chain. <clears throat> cool. So we got some microphones. Everything's great with the world. Um, let's move you a little down the bench. Uh, that will give us our control room audio next, where we can probably pull off of the monitor audio outputs, and we'll run those into an amp and run it into some speakers. So we're just going to, for now, call you generic uh, two-channel amp channel. Oh, yeah, this is, uh, I have zero um, plans for this going in. So this is my theoretical control room that we kind of gave ourselves some parameters at the start, and we're running with it. So, uh, yeah. Two channel amp, which will go into, so it's going to be left and right. That's going to go to a couple speakers. 
which we are going to pretend these are speakers. Define speaker you are. Left, right, left, right. You know, that is probably a good idea. Um, we are far enough in that that makes sense. So for those of us just joining, this is how bad my speaker looks. Great. So the name of the game is we're kind of making a theoretical control room here. Um, initially, the thought was to have a bit of a budget going into this, but shortly realizing that it's a little hard to have a budget for this because, well, without people directly quoting me on gear, I don't really know what things cost, shy of, you know, lower level things that you can buy off, you know, B&H, Markertech, uh, that kind of stuff, uh, Sweetwater. So anything with a list price to that level, which in this type of scenario, there's just a lot of questions. So we are instead trying to be uh, budget conscious while not taking the most ridiculously expensive things and not taking the least expensive things, but, you know, kind of having a nice in-between of a, a nice place to be, except for uh, these two things, get off my back about them. They are open gear frame PC cards that I've always wanted. So that's my Christmas list. They're not the cheapest, but I want them. Uh, other than that, uh, we kind of started off the stream with just kind of making a shopping list of, you know, kind of putting together this theoretical control room that is for a news studio web show. Um, we decided it was going to be 1080p. We decided um, it was going to be ultimately uh, three manned cameras and one robo camera. We kind of spec'd out what we needed in a switcher and uh, for sync pulse generators and all of that kind of fun stuff. Um, <laughs> yes. Uh, so there's definitely a lot of, a uh, lot of good stuff in here and the objective, at least on the title of this was six hours to build a control room. And at this point it's, let's see how far we can get in six hours because a lot of the stuff I'm putting in here are suggestions from you guys. And uh, well, I'm taking your word on a lot of these things because I have not personally used them. I haven't gotten demos on a lot of these things. So we're just kind of mod podging a bunch of stuff together and in theory it should work. But uh, yeah, we're just looking up equipment, seeing how it all goes together. Um, Get the Dante card and keep your audio digital. How do you use digital? In a sense, yes. Um, but that's what I was also trying to determine is because it's digital and I didn't see anything on the spec sheet about whether or not it needed word clock, but it has to. So we're just assuming it does, which is fine because our sync pulse generator can either provide it or we can pull it off of the mixer itself. So unless I'm dumb, which is 100% usually the case, um, OK, yeah. So that's that's handy to know. So anyways, we're just here we're geeking out, having a good time, putting together something that doesn't matter at all. <laughs> um, OK, where did my giant picture go? Here it is. All right, so that's going to be our main control room left and right out. 
Um, they're both going to be XLR and balanced. They're going to run to our amp and they're going to feed speakers. I have seen Dante speakers. I know they're a thing. I think I started down that rabbit hole once and I was like, this seems like a really good idea, but at the same time, way more complicated than it has to be. Um, maybe I'll pursue that in another build. But for now, we're just going to go analog out for our control room. And uh, we do have a... All right, let's start by saying what we're definitely not going to use. Um, we will put network into this because the GUI is really useful. I've used that a ton. Uh, probably no MIDI controllers. May or may not need AES out at some point, digital audio from there. Uh, Alternet, I've never used. I hear it's nice. And then AES 50 can go on hill and die. <laughs> so, okay, story with that. Um, I didn't realize at the time how much of like a bastardized version of um, power and ethernet this was and that it had such a finite range. And that was my own stupidity for not researching that more. But uh, I kind of got in a situation where we needed to go over uh, 300 feet. And yeah, that's not going to happen. So. Um, Good for short little hops when you are, you know, doing a breakout box into like a, uh, a rack or something or using AES 50 for the rack mount version of this, the, the compact, or at least I think they make one that's compact. I know that the Midas does. Um, but uh, yeah, that's, <laughs> uh, huh. moving on. Uh, so some aux ins and some aux outs. Um, I don't remember if these are specifically balanced or unbalanced. I think they're unbalanced. I'll have to check. I feel like they probably are because in the monitor, this specifically says it's balanced or unbalanced. Or maybe that's specifically referring to the XLR versus the TRS. Um, One will need the Clark Technic DN9650 to get external word clock into the X32. So at that point, is it just better to use the internal word clock generator or, I don't know, I guess, because technically, um, can, the, can the Altrix sync off of word clock coming off of the expansion card? I know that's a thing with Dante, not necessarily with the Ultrix, but I know, again, my, my Maddie knowledge is less than my Dante knowledge. So you guys will have to help me on that one, um, if that's even possible. Um, or are we gonna have to like work some magic to get word clock into all of these devices? I don't know. We might not have time to figure that out because we still need to do intercom. <laughs> uh, okay, well, that's good to know. Also good. Okay, so we know that we're using uh, three analog or four analog inputs for microphones. Um, my AES50 knowledge on this scale um, about the deeper inner workings of the protocol, I would say probably a four. Um, I knew a little bit more when it was relevant, when I was reading up on it. And I think a lot of that has gone by the wayside now. So a quick refresher, should I ever need it again, like in a hurry. Um, but, uh, I, I know it is like kind of its own hybrid uh, power and ethernet and yeah. You're gonna make me Google it. 
I don't even remember what layer protocol it is. Is it a one? Oh, this is just all audio over IP. Yeah, it's layer one. Okay. So no IP address to it or, you know, IP scheme or anything like that, which is way, which is why I prefer, um, prefer Dante, honestly, over it. Yeah, um, that's that's what my understanding was. Is it was limited by um, that the fact that it was like a hybrid power source, which was like two fifty to three hundred. I thought AES fifty length. Uh, yeah, three hundred feet. If that decides it's going to load. Oh, we just saw it here. 100 meters, 300 feet. Which is, again, why I ended up moving to Dante for my long distance, because converting it to ST fiber, obviously length becomes a moot point when you're just uh, you know running between your, your live truck and your your uh, stage box at that point. Um, yeah, licenses. I do remember going down this path of the DN 9610. Um, and I feel like, why do I remember this being more expensive than what it's appearing to be? I know I've been down this rabbit hole. Huh. I guess maybe it was another point of failure. Well, I don't I don't even remember. I feel like there was still a length limit that I was running into with this. I could be totally wrong. Um it's been four years since I've really looked into this with a purpose. His 50 before the longer runs cheap salary minus pro is the same protocol. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Uh, so we said we wanted a talkback speaker, um, which means that. Uh, when we do our intercom, typically we can get a microphone speaker plate that has a hot microphone output, or you know, at least a secondary output of that microphone. So we can piggyback on the same mic that we're using for our uh, intercom for audio and uh, also use it as a input to the mixer. And then we can use that input for our talkback, uh, which we can run into one of these. So that's going to be another thing is, again, for the sake of 
what did we even decide we're going to use for that? I think somebody has suggested a Dante intercom interface. Yeah, this guy. Which I'm pretty sure I still have a tab open for this. Nope, not using that. Not using that. Using that. Using that. Yes, this guy. So we'll have to do some research. I've never used this before. So that's going to take a little bit of a on the fly research. Um, uh, not using that. All right, we're going to close some tabs here. This is getting a little ridiculous. Uh, I don't think we're using the decimator. Uh, we are using the UTAP, but we don't need that open. We'll keep the Hilo open. Well, that's where this went. I see I have all these tabs open I don't need because I already have them down here. Uh, we don't need those anymore. That's the Maddie card we'll keep open. That's that. Not using that. We'll keep that open. Keep those open. Nope. Nope. And nope. Which I think we have that open here. OK. OK. So let's. Where are we at over here? We got this going on. So at some point, we're going to have, uh, just for the sake of argument, just so we don't forget, which I know you guys won't let me, but this will be our uh, whatever, uh, we'll say, calm microphone, calm hot mic. How about that? just so we remember that that is going to be some sort of an audio input so that we can assign it to a speaker, which if we look at this, what can we do? Uh, probably, you know, we don't have to really break the bank on this one. Um, we could actually use one of these left writers there's uh oh man what speaker was that um man i don't remember i found this really handy little speaker on i think i got it off of sweetwater and it was a speaker that had an amp built into it of course um, Sweetwater amp, not amp, speaker built in amp. Powered speakers, that's what I meant. Uh, maybe. Maybe not. Wait, nope. Yes, is that it? That sounds familiar. I don't think it was JBL, but I mean, I'm not opposed to that. JBL makes pretty good speakers. I'm a fan. <clears throat> that is Bluetooth. This is, where, where am I going here? What do we got for specs? Filters, I should say. Uh, man, this is embarrassing. I wish I could remember what speakers those were off the top of my head. Oh, yes. Sonos, Eris, these guys, or some version of these. Uh, yeah, because these guys 
um, we can take either a balanced line off of these or an unbalanced RCA, which we could take off of the back of the mixer. And then this is going to act as our preamp, preamp, amp. And that is also going to then take care of the other speaker. So that certainly would be good for audio in the or at least talk back in the control room itself. What is this recommendation? Oh yeah, these guys. Um, yes, these are also very good. What I was looking at the other one though was the RCA input. Not that we couldn't convert them, but uh, could they have a bunch of different flavors of these nowadays, don't they? Yeah, we could we could certainly do that. We could do a single speaker for talk back. Probably be cheaper. Okay, you talk me into it. We'll do that. We'll do a single balanced line. And that'll just be an output. I like it. We'll do that. I have a couple of these for my uh, uh, in the in the truck for control room speaker. Two of them, and also I have a little portable one that I carry around for testing. So that works as well, and. What was I using? This guy. So that'll be our talk back. Somewhere in here. So we got that. We got two generic speakers that I uh, can't be bothered to look up models for uh, connected to a generic uh, amp, which I can't be bothered to go look for a model for right now. Um, so that will be for our studio. Let's put a little studio. Talk back. Now, I do also find it handy in the control room, which this will probably feed into our necessity for IFBs and stuff, but Wooler, they're four channel and two channel speakers. Um, you know, the, the one are you rack mount ones. Uh, those are incredibly useful. These little four channel guys. Also true, also true, could. Um, so probably we'll throw one of these in here because I know we'll definitely need one, at least for mixes, for listening to uh, different things. So we'll put a four channel in. So we're going to steal that. Uh, w O H L E R sounds right. Except I'm probably going to want to do it this way. <clears throat> and then what we'll do is we will put that in there and we will turn it and do something like that. Sure. And at some point, we will take a couple analog outputs from this. Great. 
All right. Uh, microphones calm for that. And then we're going to have some things like the expression, which is going to be embedded at this point. So we probably are going to want to DA this and get it into the Altrix so that we can get it into the mixer. Unless this has, unless we want to like de-embed it in between and get it to analog audio. Um, so it is the difference of a DA versus a de-embedder. If we keep it, okay, I'm feeling a DA. That way we still have it going to the router as well. Uh, yeah, that would be something we could determine, right? We could go and find out the wattage uh, on the specs of all of these and kind of put them together and kind of get a, a general idea for that. Um, especially if we needed like to put a couple UPSs in, right? For uh, power redundancy, then that would be a absolute need. So I'm feeling that. Let's put DA in between this. Let's, and I believe we only need it on channel one, and not the key channel. Or I could delete the arrow altogether. Good talk. All right, so we got that going there. We have a little DA, which could be a throwdown. It could be a rack mounted, you know, all sorts of different things. And then eventually that will also make its way. Oh, this is going to be challenging. Sure, you guys know where that's going. Uh, okay, so again, the reason we're doing that is to get not only the uh, primary channel, the fill side, out of the character generator, which is also what we'll use our clips for, to the router, but then we can also just pull our embedded audio off of that as well and then get that to the mixer that way. Excellent, yes. So we got that going there. We got this, which, I mean, if we wanted to, we need audio off of these if we're going to end up using them for Skype calls. So we could pull those off analog audio or, or, no, that won't work because they are upstream the UTAPs are. So that would be whatever's going into them. So to get audio out of them, I can tell these things are going to be more of a hassle than they're worth. Um, okay. Let's see. What do we got here? We got HDMI out. Or we could get like a wee little sound card for both of these. Graphite ABM works with the Altrix. That is a possibility. I don't think that's going to help me with this problem, though. If I'm pulling... Wait a second. So if we take the 
video off of the Alteryx. That'll come in embedded into the UTAP, into the driver for the uh, webcam. So that will get audio and video to our remote person. And then audio back and video back, a video return, mind you, we're going to need No, no, the video return, no, the video to us is just the HDMI monitor out. So that would be like, you know, Skype full on a screen. So that's fine. In which case, then we can just de-embed the audio off of that HDMI as well, which we're going to have to do anyways. I know we don't have to anyways, because we're running that straight into the solo. So, but we are going to be applying frame syncs, so that audio is going to be stripped anyways. So we are definitely going to need to figure out probably like a USB audio dongle. Yes, correct. We do not want it in the solo. So now we're at this point where we are uh, here. Right, right here. So we need to intercept the audio somehow off of this to get it into the mixer. So what I'm thinking is we could just get a USB 3.0 to uh, digital audio input or even just analog. Um, Oh, man, but that's, yeah. Let's, let's see what the world makes. So we want a USB 3. Uh, see what audio interface comes up with. What is this? First thing. So that seems like it has a little bit more. Well, that's entirely way too much than what I need. I mean, it would. That's no. We want output. That that's going to be input. I so in a normal scenario, I think that would work. But this uh, PC open gear card, which I'm insistent on using, I don't think <laughs> I don't think has a uh, eighth inch audio output. So, but if we just go USB three to uh, eighth inch. Uh, what if the Cobalt Open Gear frames go into the Altrix? What are you saying, like a theoretical, like Altrix slash Open Gear frame type of a product? That would be interesting. Nova One. Uh, yeah, so basically this is USB 3 to, uh, eighth inch audio is really what we're looking for. Um, uh, that's kind of it. Oh, this is actually a thing. Or is that an output? This is what I want it to be. 
I don't want an input. Yeah. Integrated audio out and microphone in. Do not work for TV or car. <laughs> Good to know. Man, that would be nuts if that's all it is. Yeah, that's perfect. What could go wrong? So stick a couple of those in and then just run uh, eighth inch to like uh, something or another. Full audio interface. So you're saying like maybe like a wee little mixer um, or something that can take in multiple inputs. Um, or something there. That, that's a really interesting thing, though. I, I might just get one of those and play with it. If that works reliably, then that would be really interesting. Inner space, huh? Inner space audio interface that comes up on Amazon. Hmm. Yeah, we could we could do something like this. What is that? U control, ultra low latency, two in, two out, USB audio interface. What? Well, well, what is this? Whirlwind makes a box, huh? That's another option. This is interesting, though. And it's got good reviews. OK. Maybe we'll go with this for the sake of argument. UCA. Two in, two out, which I assume, yep, left, right, left, right. So that could be our output into The mixer. Okay, well, we'll check out the whirlwind, whirlwind product real quick. Well, that just looks interesting. So it's USB A. Think. USB A. Hmm. Okay. Left, right. What do we got? Left mono pad. Oh, so that gives you a little bit of some handles on it too. Interesting.
you might be able to get me on board with that. Um, and not on Amazon. That's fine. I was just curious. Okay. I like it. We're going to do it. PC USB by Whirlwind. I can dig it. All right, excellent. So that will take care of, where are they at? Here. So let's add a couple of these in here. And we'll just say WW for whirlwind. Did that actually work? Oh man, it's a new feature. That's cool. You just drop it in the middle and it'll just splice it for you. Nice, I can dig it. All right, so that will be our method for getting uh, audio. Oh, that's not what I wanna do at all. <laughs> uh, that's gonna be separate. Cooperate, please. Thank you. I'm not putting that in. That's going to be just a little USB thing. I'm surprised you guys didn't call me out on that. Perfect. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy these and come over here and paste them and put them over here. And then that way, maybe make these a little bit beefier. As soon as it would like to cooperate with me. I didn't say it was a perfect system, but it is really nice. Okay. Make sure these are lined up. Close enough. Link, link. And I'm just going to flag these as a different color so that we know that they are USB. I guess it would have made more sense to make that, you know, USB 3 blue. There you go. All right. So then we know that this is going to be balanced. So our left and right. And we'll give these arbitrary numbers as well. Not that they would necessarily go into these inputs, but for the sake of staying semi-organized, we'll do that. Perfect. All right. So, and... Cool. So that takes care of that. I can dig it. And then those are, will be our remote. Remote Skype guests. Just a little note there. So we know what's going on there. Again, that's going to be for our talkback speaker off of our intercom. Those are our talent microphones. Uh, you know what? Let's get organized. Say this is 
So a wise man once told me that there is no talent in news. There is only presenters. Now, take that with what you will. But I was told that very early on in my career. They may call themselves talent, and they can do that. But to us, they will always be presenters. And I'm sorry for all of the presenters I have just offended. Sorry, not sorry. <clears throat> okay. And this over here is our control room. And Studio Talkback. And down here, I think we were just kind of flagging this as, uh, I don't know, producer utility speaker. for the sake of argument. Um, clip playback is going to also come from the expression, which I don't think we documented that yet. But what we're going to do is we are going to pull it off of the um, DA because we're going to have it embedded into the Altrix, and then we'll pull that off of the Maddie channel. So we can absolutely copy this over so we can see that happening. So off of the DA, we're going to run this into the Altrix at some point. And this will be uh, SDI. And then again, we'll pull that off of here. So that'll be a channel of Maddie. Um, presenter does sound more established. Talent is so, I don't want to say egotistical, but there's definitely something going on there. Um, Where is, I guess we can bring over our encoder too, since that's going to be here. So that is going to be I guess we want that uh, man could have that come straight off, but uh, we probably would want to well no, we can drive that off of a Maddie channel. It'll just come off of the router um, once it gets uh, derogatory, maybe. Uh, so that would technically be over here. So again, we would have a Matty output running into here, and then we could assign that to Aja Hilo there. So that should handle our streaming card. Uh, what else? Hyperdex. So that's going to be the same concept. These can be uh, embedded as well on this side. <laughs> yep. Definitely mix minus for that. Now I have, it's weird. I've come across almost 50 50 split between whether they want to hear themselves. And when they don't, but I, I've come across people, presenters um, in sports that just can't function unless they hear themselves in their ear. I don't know what it is. So, you know.
It's bizarre. I can't speak to that end. I'm not an on-air person as I'm sitting here in front of you guys, but I definitely don't have an earpiece in, so. And if I do, it's a pretty well-hidden one. We'll say that. <clears throat> okay. Anything else glaringly obvious that we're missing? You were the robo camera. Don't need you. Uh, da, 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 da. All right. Four is simple as I think we can possibly make this with the time. Um, this might be, and again, we can always bounce back to this if we need to. I guess we should determine what hyperdex we're using. That's, that's kind of a little placeholder there. Something obviously that's going to be embedded. Um, again, I'm a fan of the studios. And again, because of the, uh, non-proprietary uh, SSDs, it's always handy. But what I did determine, and I don't know if this has changed, but with Aja's, they can actually record to both SSDs simultaneously versus the Blackmagic HyperDeck Studios is more of a rollover thing, right? So if the one fills up, it rolls over to the second one. Can anyone confirm or deny that's still the case? Um, I know that's definitely true, at least on the Blackmagic side of things, but I don't know. It's been a while since I looked at what Aj is doing with theirs, if it's still independent or if it has like a rollover function when one drive gets full. I mean, regardless in this build, we're gonna use these because of the, the drives, but uh, in which case, again, we can pull in the embedded there. So everything's gonna be great with the world. So we'll just do Hyperdeck Studios. Um, and yeah, we definitely could have like a bunch more monitoring in this, like as far as, uh, you know, looping video through monitors so we can see those a little bit bigger, a little hard to visualize otherwise without an actual floor plan built for a control room. Um, we'll see how much time we have at the end of this. Okay, so we have a generic audio, we have generic video, let's do sync, genlock distribution. Yes and no. Um, with the Hyperdex, you can't really do it directly from a switcher with Rostock, but you could build a dashboard panel um, and send TCP commands out to control the hyperdeck. And then those buttons that you build in dashboard panel, you can trigger with Rostock GPI commands. So you would have to have a dashboard running in the intermediate, but it is possible. As a matter of fact, I think if they still have it on their website, I have no idea if this is still here or not, but in the university under open gear, they may still have a 
working version of that. Uh, TCIP IP, I believe. I don't believe, I could be wrong. You probably could do with RS-232 if you had an adapter. Um, for your dashboard PC, but generically speaking, uh, TCIP from the switcher to dashboard and then from dashboard to the Blackmagic deck. Um, custom panel to control Blackmagic Hyperdeck. It's got a little video and it's got a little download. Um, this custom panel demonstrates how to control Blackmagic Designs Hyperdeck by TCP based control protocol. It also demonstrates the use of global variables. So you get to learn something too. Um, yeah, so you can actually download this. Uh, And open it. Now, I haven't looked at this in years, so uh, I don't know if it's necessarily the same one. Looks similar. So, I mean, it's, it's more, again, of a, a tutorial, but it works. Um, so you got a setup tab, you type in the IP address of your, uh, of your hyperdeck, and then this should show connected and then it should just work. And you could take these protocols and, you know, dazzle up the buttons however you want. Um, I actually had thought about, uh, doing a, like a, a graphic one, you know, going in Photoshop and cutting out an actual picture of a deck and, you know, cutting the buttons out and then using, I, it was just something I never, maybe I'll, maybe I'll do that for a video. That'll give me an excuse to do it. We'll, we'll make a fancy uh, black magic dashboard panel. Um, that could be fun, but yeah, that should just work. And uh, here I'll, uh, so you don't have to go looking for it. I will give you the link here in chat. I think that works. I don't think YouTube will block that, but we'll see. So yes, completely possible. All right, uh, where were we? Let's make sync distribution. Uh, Lucid chart document. And we are using the, where did it, oh, here it is. The Bright Eye 56. Like I said, we're gonna use it till it doesn't make sense anymore. But I think we're gonna be fine. All right, so things that we know that absolutely need reference for sure is going to be our CCUs, which honestly, I might as well just snatch them from over here. And this also has a reference input. So all of our cameras can be referenced. Hallelujah. And I think we're going to definitely need a DA for this because this has two outputs. Um, ba, 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 ba. High level sync available with either. Yeah. No, no, wait. Try level sync available with either HD or SD, SDI out. So that's try level digital. Am I reading that right? Of course, that's another thing we didn't really think about was uh, <laughs> getting bars into the switcher. Oops. Uh, that was totally an intention too. Um, 
Nope. Okay. No bars. Uh, that was an oversight. Oh, we could do this. We could kill this and get it to HDMI, and then we could have bars coming in anyways. Uh, if we really needed to. We don't have to have this coming into here. Yeah. Or we could say no RoboCam. I don't know. I'll think about that. Anyways, uh, DA, right. So we are going to need for sure, um, these are, that is a reference in, that's all that. So we could, here's what I'm thinking. We'll take one output specifically for the switcher and then we'll run everything else out of here and hit that open gear da card we were talking about but yeah okay i can dig it which i did write that model number down which was this guy So we'll bounce back over here. We will add one of these and we will say this is going to be our open gear card, which should have the eight outputs to it. And we're going to do this. Nope, just kidding. We're going to do this and we're going to turn it sideways. <clears throat> so we have our secondary composite output and that link up, it will, cool. And one to there. Try that again. One to there, one to there. And like we said, we're gonna have the Carbonite Solo as well and that'll come out of our secondary spigot or primary i should say so it's going to be out one out two and what else the expression is going to need gen lock Make this a little bigger. I'm telling you, they have to make a feature where you can like just auto straighten all these lines. That would just be great. So there's our expression studio. And what else? What else are we missing here? Uh, the helo. I don't remember if that, no, that wouldn't need it because we're not bringing that into the switcher. T, multi viewer, hyperdeck, hyperdeck, they can take sync. Sure. Because the one we do have coming in HDMI 3, which I think. Shouldn't need a frame sync on it then if, yeah, that should work. That should be fine. It should be good. Let's see if we are out of DA spigots yet. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, we got one more. Anything else we need? We have our four cameras, our expression. Those don't need it. Oh, the Altrix and the Open Gear Frame. They will probably need reference too. 
So we can either add a second DA and DA the first output, which would give us more than enough. We could also daisy chain. We could uh, loop that through high impedance off of that last one. We could, yeah, we got, we got slots available. They absolutely have loop out, which we can absolutely do. If we wanted to save on a card, we could go all tricks to the open gear frame, which I think is actually what I do in, in the fly pack that I have. I feel like I did that. So we could go all tricks to the OG frame, OG X frame, mind you, because we're sophisticated and we want the new frame because it's cool. It has LED lights. And by new, I mean it's several years now, but it's still very exciting. Uh, OK, anything else? I think that's it. Then there's the matter of word clock. which I think we determined that we can do it based off of the mixer. So if the mixer generates word clock and the card takes its reference from the mixer, then Altrix can take its word clock reference from that MADI input That should be everything. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. I like it until I don't like it. So we will just duplicate this. And because I'm not going to attempt to try and spell that again, we'll go here. And let me go borrow this again. We'll borrow the Manny card. And we are going to say that this is generating our word clock. And this is internal, right? This is not a, whoops, that is not a physical connection. So maybe I will mark that with a different type of line. Sure, I like it. All right, so that's gonna go there. And then that's gonna ultimately wind up to the Ultrix, which, you know what, why not? We'll just tack that in there somewhere. <clears throat> so, that should get to there, and then our digital audio should be synchronous between everything. So we will be click free, and that's really what matters. Click free is the name of the game. Uh, reference, yeah. And let's, so we have, because we did forget. We did forget about bars. So we'll bring this over. We'll tack that in. And we'll just run that into the Altrix. Which now I can see I'm going to have to do this. And fix all my lines again. Lucid chart 
if you're out there, if you're watching, please make this a feature. Man, what happened to this guy? He's all upset. There we go. <laughs> uh, no. Okay, we're going to put you there. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's some more robust devices that have that kind of stuff. Why do I have double arrows here? Oh, because I'm being dumb. Um, but, uh, like, for instance, I know, like, the Ross uh, SRG. Why can't I get a hold of you? Are you, like, that close together? That's probably not even the right one. It has a, a fair amount that can be programmed. Like, uh, certainly not 64 by 64 reference outputs, but... Um, I know, like, I've seen some throwdown ones that were like eight black burst outputs. That's also, that's a good question. Uh, uh, sync pulse generator, uh, And why would I even search for that? Uh, slash NDA. Uh, sync pulse generator. So what are you? Not quite what I was imagining, but. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, and you know, those more advanced ones, they can take like uh, GPS inputs and you can sync off of that. Um, there are, uh, there's definitely, definitely solutions out there. And I think that's going to take forever to load. So we're going to bail on that. Um, Tektronics probably makes a good amount of stuff. Yeah, that's I mean, that's a four up there. They, I mean, they just kind of assume, I think, for the most part, that you're just going to DA it anyways, or utilize uh, high impedance loops. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. That was fun. All right, over here, we were saying that we were going to stick this here. So we have bars. Uh, and I know the Midas can generate tone, but if we want to tone out of this guy, nope, wrong one. We do have some analog audio coming out of here, but I'm assuming, and you know what they say, you shouldn't, but I'm guessing this probably can have embedded tone, in which case we could just pull it off in the Altrix. Uh, AS audio one and two, so we could use a spigot just specifically for that, even if it's not embedded. So that's probably what we would do. Uh, that's my guess. 
So we can just pull this off and stick it over here. And we'll just make that its own input as well because we have so many inputs. And we'll just call that town. Without looking it up, I'm sure it probably can be embedded off of the other bars. If that's the case, great. Then we would be able to just use one single input. If not, hey, we can still get it in um, through the AES output. So that's cool. All right. So this is our sync chain. That wasn't so bad. Makes sense to me, most of our stuff. Um, we could do something for network, but I mean, it's more or less just big network switch, lots of ports running to all of the, all of the devices. Um, If you guys want to see that, we can do it. Again, probably just a 24 port rack mount network switch with a couple SFP ports. And PoE, yes, all the PoE plus plus. So whether that's a router that can, or not a router, but a switch, uh, a switch that has those ports, or we can use PoE injectors, um, either or, because it's just that camera, I think, that needs it right now. Um, so that's always an option. Yes. So maybe even just make like a little note here, maybe a little red, just so we know that that needs a PoE for network. Because I don't think anything else does. But I mean, I and mean, we can even put it on this uh, Ethernet switch for the Dante comms. So that's going to be. Yeah, probably, probably then two switches, maybe one to handle. Well, if anything, redundancy. But uh, I don't know. Like, like I said, I never used the uh, the Dante comms before. Would you suggest a separate isolated router for that, as opposed to one that's just handling like your uh, TCP commands between devices. Thoughts? Could go either way. Um, Because that's going to be the next thing we do is probably we got to come up with intercoms. Yep, different VLAN. That's fair. Okay, let's see. So this, let's see, we're going to go back here, we're going to make a new diagram. And then this is where we're going to have to, oh, we still got a, still need a teleprompter for these, <clears throat> which will be a bit of a composite world scenario. That's never fun.
Yeah, so again, we could always up convert. Oh, it's never fun. Eh. Yeah, we'll come back to that. We will come back to teleprompters and we will do intercom because where? Nope, somewhere in here. Okay, we're done with the Wooler speakers. Uh, close some tabs. Done with that. Done with that. Done with that. Leave the Matty card open just in case. That is the camera. Here it is. Okay. So we have our interface. And So, I think this is what yeah, I think we're going to move to intercom now. Um, yeah, we could run HDSDI prompters. The only downside to that is we couldn't use the composite uh, where did it go? Because this is uh, in the CCU, if we wanted to utilize the uh, triax or fiber going to the camera, we would have to run those lines to the prompter separately. Yeah, yeah, go ahead and give me a. I, hmm, I don't know. Let me think about that. I mean, uh, how can we do this? My first thought is Discord. I could try and use a OBS source. Let's look. What can I do with OBS here? We can do a audio input capture. So we could, let's say this is remote microphone and we can capture a microphone. Discord is easy. It is. Do I have it installed? Negative. All right, we'll get creative here. Because alternatively, I could take Discord on my phone. Oh yeah, the web page. That's right. Uh, open Discord on your browser. But that's not what I want to do at all. And now they want my birthday? Man, that's getting personal. I don't know. As if the rest of the world doesn't already have that somewhere. Uh, already have an invite, join a server. Uh, I guess I can make a server. For me and my friends. 
I think you guys are all friends. Uh, skip. Take me to my server. And now you're going to make me log in. Of course you are. Account already registered. Okay. Now we are going to go confirm that email. Man, I have too many emails. There you are. Too many email accounts, I should say. So did that work? That worked. <clears throat> okay. So now here is what we are going to do. I'm going to go invite people and we will pop this link into here. And we will have you guys join. And we're going to make a new channel called Stream. And I think. I know there's a way we can, without taking up too much time, hopefully this doesn't sound bad, but this is either going to create a ton of feedback or no feedback at all. So my microphone is now, let me mute it here. Now I should be able to hear you guys. And if all goes according to plan, I should be able to switch this over to Capture See if we can do this and not like break the world. Evil Techie, are you able to speak? Yes. Oh look at that. So now if I increase my volume. I need to talk into the Discord. Otherwise, I'll hear myself on delay on the YouTube, which will be very disorienting. Ah, yeah. OK. So yeah. Man, how are we going to thought process? Yeah, OK. So what I will do is I will talk into Discord as well, and then you can turn down your stream audio. Correct. Perfect. And then everyone can hear you, hopefully. Look at us. 
professionals. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. So yeah, go ahead and uh, walk us through a little bit here. Um, I saw you were starting to uh, type it out. There's actually not too much magic to the whole system here. Um, basically, that 5522, it's now the Dash A model because they just updated the hardware revision a couple of weeks ago. That is the, um, the brains of the whole Studio Tech Intercom system. Um, what that device does in an intercom situation will have two main purposes. One, it will create the mixed minuses for each of your party lines. Um, and that way, basically, each member of the party line just comes in as Dante Audio and then back out as Dante Audio. So that can be any combination of devices you want, whether that be belt packs, analog of Dante for four wire. Uh, Studio Tech also sells um, the Model 348 main station. They have analog party line to Dante converters as well. So you can basically mix and match whatever sort of components you need. But that main station is what actually handles all the audio mixing. Interesting. So that makes, uh, I assume there's, is there a specific GUI to that or is it just the alternate uh, patch so software? There's a web page you can load at that which you use for initial setup. You basically either have a 32 channel model or a 64 channel model. Um, and that's how many channels you have to play with. And you can set that up into different combinations of like a 32 channel party line or two 16 channel party lines or a 16 channel party line and four or four channel IFBs or, or various combinations and thereof. Interesting. And then at that point, and else is just routing audio in. So if you had a 16 channel party line, you'd, you'd see it in the interface is like, I think it's like 16, Party line A, you know, one, party line A, two, and whatever you send in the party line A1 comes out all the other ports, but not the A1 output. So you have a mix minus basically for every input into that party line. Neat. So then, okay. All right. So if we're going to put this into practice, then. Um, we could say and you can certainly stop me when I'm making a fool out of myself, but we are going to say that this is the 44D, M44D, so we'll copy that. So that 44, I believe that's just an analog Dante interface. I don't think it's anything intercom specific in this situation. Okay, so to be compliant with that, where did... You're looking for... Uh, Dante to ClearCom earlier, I think. Yeah, I believe that's what. Uh, so that would be the model 45DC. So there's a 45DR, which is um, party line, RTS party line to Dante, and the 45DC, which is ClearCom party line to Dante. Okay, so the 45DC intercom interface. Okay, yeah. That makes more sense. And that will do two channels of party line uh, in that version. And the RTS, it does one dual channel system because that's just how RTS two wire is slightly different, but fundamentally they're the same. Right. Same box. All right. So, so you could take that then, and that has an internal power supply capable of powering about three belt packs. So you could take that and plug a couple of ClearCom belt packs straight into there and have them show up on Dante if that's something you were interested in. Well, ain't that just slick? Anything beyond three belt packs or so, you, you would need to bring an external power supply into the mix. All right. Of course, you can always just buy straight up Dante belt packs too. And that lets you avoid all the ClearCom, you know, analog party line fun of noise and the fact that it's unbalanced and picks up AM radio and all the other fun things that come with analog intercom. Uh, truth. But I can see that being advantageous for intercom for our cameras. Uh, so we could leave but them. Remember, you have CCUs, so you can just do four wire into the CCUs. Right. And it's no different to the intercom engine. So just you just take your favorite Dante analog interface. 
Uh, personally, I'm fond of the audio science IOs, but there's, you know, there's a million and one analog to Dante options on the market. So you can just pick your favorite. You said audio science? Uh, yeah, that's the brand I've been using a lot. But uh, Feral Fish is an option, Direct Out's an option, Automate's got their thing, Studio Tech sells options. There's just a, you can pick your poison there. That first milk down, first offer. So there you go. This guy. That's the witch, that's switchcraft. Audio science IO. Oh, I see it. Okay. Maybe. Oh. So what you would do is each CCU would get one input and one output on the, on this interface or any other Dante interface. It doesn't have to be this one specifically. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then those just get compared to the party line within the intercom engine. They just come in as Dante, Dante audio and leave as Dante audio. I like that it. Way there's no nulling to worry about or anything like that because it's inherently hardwired the whole system. So again, then what we can do is we could drop this guy and we could have our CCUs. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Uh, here, effectively. And why don't we turn you sideways? Or something like that. And bi directional. And then, of course, probably have a switch somewhere in between. Yeah, you draw yourself a nice little cloud symbol to show <laughs> yourself the internet or your switch. Oh, cloud symbols. It's in the cloud, guys. All right, so that's going to have also a connection to the switch. And again, these are going to be technically bi-directional connections. So that's great there. That's going to get to the CCUs, which will get to the cameras, which will have, and I guess we should make a uh, assertion that this is a uh, ClearCom Dante system. So don't forget the Intercom engine because right now you don't have uh, you know each camera only one camera will basically be able to talk. So you need something to mix the audio from all the cameras together. Oh, you're saying so? Um... The intercom and if you're going to go this route, you have to have the intercom engine as kind of the heart of the system because that's what handles all the audio mixing for the intercom. Which is and then you just add in whichever other options you want. So if you wanted the 45 DC, then you could add a clearcom belt backs to the line. I see. Okay, so that previous uh, thing we were looking at, you said it was 5522A. 5522A. which is your brain. I would just search down in the, um, the Dante section on their site and you can scroll through, see all the other options they've got as well. You also got Dante announcers consoles, which can play into the system very well, very nicely as well, because that intercom engine can also generate IFBs as a second option as well. So, what's the price point on all of this stuff? The 205s are about $700, and compare that to the ClearCom AB 140, I think it is, which is about $1,300. So. When I designed my production trailer, it was cheaper to do everything studio tech, and it came about half the price of building an equivalent analog clear count system. 
Mm-hmm. And I got twice as many party lines at the end as well. Now, uh, this was a sports production, so the, um, the AV-120s definitely ate into that. But if you scroll down, you can go to page two, and three, four, five. They got a lot of Dante stuff. Is what they started to become a lot well-known for. So that, I would also open that 348 page. That's a good one to look at, too. That would be like what you give your producer there if you're doing IFPs. But open that, come back. We'll come back to that in a minute. Yeah. There's your belt packs. Yep. So 340, 374A, that's another good one to open, too. And then if we continue on, we'll find come across the intercom engines as well. Yeah, the 5422A uh, is what we're aiming for here. This guy. Uh, sorry, I, was, I said 55 earlier. There you go, 5422A. So this guy here. Correct. Which does all of your mixing. Got your redundancy, primary and secondary. All right, I'm feeling it. So we'll drop this guy in, preferably with no style on the font. And then as long as that is on the switch, again, assuming at this point we aren't worrying too much about a uh, having a redundant network just for the sake of time, but so that'll be on there. These can come in here. And then you're saying now that these are on the Dante network. The audio engine can mix those Correct. into a single party line. And then this could interface directly to any clear comp belt packs that we need. Exactly. Perfect. Um, you, could also just, you could also add it, uh, Dante belt packs. Uh, you could add a hot mic speaker. You know, you can, it's, it's all Dante at this point. So it's a lot easier to move around and route around and do other fun things. I am on one board. Of big, one of the big advantages is not that I think it would apply in your studio situation. Dante is very easy to get over fiber because you just need a network switch and an SFP. Yeah, for sure. Compared to the thousands of dollars you would need for specialist party line fiber converters. Right. So if you wanted to take this one step further, you can look at those other, that belt pack you opened that tab for, and also the, uh, the main station you opened as well. So we have a four channel belt pack. So if let's say this is gonna be, when there are studio situation, um, this could be a floor director for sure. And we could have them, we could isolate these cameras, production. Um, and I guess we could even, correct me if I'm wrong, channel three and channel four, if we wanted those to be specifically um, interrupts, could we do that for if they wanted to get in the ears of the presenters? Uh, if you wanted to, you could. If you're starting to push the system a little bit, but absolutely. Um, the intercom engine, one of its features is to create party lines. Mm -hmm. So basically it does voice activated um, interrupt. So you send program audio into one port, the one input into the engine and then your interrupt audio onto a second. So what I found is you can just cascade. Um, and that actually was one other feature the intercom engine can do as well that might be relevant is it can also just straight up mix audio together. So you could take an interrupt from your floor director mm -hmm. and an interrupt from your producer and an interrupt from your A1, mix them all together and then route them into the interrupt channel of the IFB. And then any any one of them could interrupt your, uh, your talent on air at any time. And then I guess if they were both keyed in at the same time, then it would just be a mixed interrupt. Correct. 
Interesting. What a world so, we live obviously, in. Obviously, this isn't as fancy as like a full on, you know, RTS or ClearCom or Riedel Matrix, but it's also a fraction of the cost. So, yeah, no, definitely will get the job done. This is a, uh, I love learning things. I don't know about you guys. The 348 is uh, basically an eight channel station as well. Oh, this guy here, yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, um, so the feature of the 348, if you were in a small situation and you only needed one person handle interrupts, the 348 can do interrupts within itself as well. So if you were in a small studio situation and you only had, you know, the producer with this box and they were the only ones who would ever interrupt, you can do the interrupts from within as well. Very interesting. So when you do get some downtime, I would take a look at the manuals of all these because Studio Tech writes very well manual, very good manuals and, and goes into all the use cases about all these different options and the sample diagrams and all that such. They do a good job of breaking everything down um, and providing example use cases and such. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll we'll go with this for sure um, for our producer. I like where we're going with this. Um, so we had a question: scratch the forty-five DC and remain with Dante in room and the Lyo for patch. Yeah. Yeah, so if we're not going to do any ClearCom belt packs, we're just going to down to belt packs. You can just delete the 45 DC because we don't we don't have a use for it. This is true, and I'm trying to think if there would be any. I'm sure there's always situations, but uh, yeah, we could. Might as well just nix that, and we'll go with the one belt pack for the floor director, and we'll go with a couple uh, main station type things for. I guess we didn't even really talk about uh, how many people are going to be in the control room, but yeah, the production trailer I built, I gave a three forty eight to the producer and the A one, and everybody else on the truck got a got a four channel belt back, uh, screwed to the desk with the with the bracket. Yeah, that should be sufficient. Yeah, I like that too. That way, we don't need to even bother with the uh, the talkback scenario for. Uh, getting it into the mixer because that is, again, truly not an interrupt. It's just a mix into the, uh, into your output. So I like that. We'll just kill that all together and we'll just have them talk directly through one of these stations. If you want to get even fancier, we can even keep going further. Oh boy. I don't know if you saw these. It has a, an on air belt pack as well. So I don't know what your hypothetical studio situation is, but if you, you had folks at a desk, uh, you could provide them an on air belt pack, which has uh, a mic input and a headphone output. I think it was on the previous page. Down here. Maybe go back one more page, page two, I think. Or, so, yeah, so just to point it out that 62, you got the listen only belt pack, which we probably don't want in this case, but that would be the equivalent of like a listen only IFB belt pack in the analog world. Right. Now if you scroll down, I think it's, there's one that's on air belt pack as well. Oh, here it is. Actually yeah, called the- model. Um, so if you were wiring, you could do wired mics in your studio. You could, you know, get a wired lav and a IRFB and just clip this to their belt, and you're good to go. You know, you don't have to do um, what party line or what what IFBs in the studio then. Yeah, that's interesting. Talk I mean, back. This is basically the equivalent of a cough box and belt back form, but. 
Yeah, I would say definitely interesting. In this case, um, of course, if you're going to do wireless, then this isn't going to help you. And you yeah. just use that I/O you bought, and you take an output of that I/O and send that into your IP transmitter instead. So, or go for the listen only. Well, they'd have to be wired. Then it's not 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 any good any good to give them a wireless mic and a wired IFP. So, also true. Yeah. So. Yeah, so we'd have to throw some wireless IFBs and, again, like you said, run it into the uh, interface box here for our transmitters. Or if you had a system that had a Dante input on your IFB transmitter, you could just plug that straight into the Dante network as well. Also could do that. So pick your poison. There's, once you kind of see how this all ties together, it's... At least, especially in the smaller situations, the Dante thing here just makes everything easier because there's no no absurd cabling or anything needed. Yeah, definitely, uh, definitely scales really well. I can see now that I've uh, only really scratched the surface in this uh, in this world um, with my applications and everything that I've done with it so far. So this is. Uh, I certainly knew this was all possible. It's just, you know, sitting down and actually like putting it all together. Very enlightening. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this switch like this. That's just gonna be easier. We'll put this guy at the top. Yeah, I'd be interested to see if they have a um, a demo GUI of that, of this uh, interface. Be fun There's to get... not much in the interface. It's basically you just define how many party lines and how you break them up. So once you set it up once, you probably hardly touch it again. The rest is just Dante routing. And that the Dante routes determine what's in each party line then. So. so this shouldn't conflict with the Altrix and the audio mixer because as of right now, the audio mixer is Matty. Um, so so put this one further now. Let's plop a Dante card in our audio mixer and get a Matty Dante interface instead. Could also now do we've that. We just made a big upload of audio. We can just send anything to anywhere on, on our web. This is true. This is true. That way, you could program out of your mixer and into directly route it to an output of one of those belt packs and doesn't even tie up a party line channel. Yeah, so you think we would go with the replace the Maddie card with the Dante card or keep Maddie and then do a Maddie to Dante conversion? So I would replace the Matty card in the mixer with a Dante card, and then take that Matty from the Ultrix and turn that into Dante. I am feeling that. And if you want a budget-friendly Matty to Dante converter, IO, or sorry, not IO, um, Direct Out has the Xbox MD, I believe is the model which is the cheapest Matty Dante converter I've seen on the market so far. It's cheaper than the RedNet, I think, that most people were using prior. What was the model number? Direct out. I believe it's Xbox, EX dot, Xbox, EXbox dot MD, I believe. So EXbox. This guy. Yep, and that's the German site, but I believe that is the one. Yes, that is very German. But now I should be able to do this. That is also still, no, wait, wait. Yeah, that's right. Okay. You click the little, the quick little British flag, you can get yourself to the English site. Oh, yeah, you got it. Cool, cool. Yeah, okay. So we'll stick that. Uh, primary and 
your matted B and C. So we'll uh, run that directly into the, I shouldn't say directly, but that will now go in between here. Of course, it helps if I actually put a little box in for it first. So that'll convert our Dante out to Maddie. I don't think that's 64 by 64 anymore, but that's okay. All right. Well, the X32 is limited to uh, 32, but you'll still get the full 64 channels from the Maddie on the Ultrix that you can do anything you like with them. And what I found in the workflow is that just parking, since 64 is a lot of channels, you can park whatever other sources where you have audio coming from SDI. And routing audio within Dante is going to be a lot easier than just, you know, fussing around the dashboard with the router panel. It's a lot, lot more comfortable for the A1. So yeah, the rent that's about $2,700. The direct out is about $1,300. There's a little bit of a difference there. The only thing that the RedNet has is a word clock input. So if syncing off of word clock is important, then you would want the uh, you would want the RedNet instead. But and the Xbox can pull sync off of the Natty, so you should be good there. And it appears redundant power supplies. Oh, come back. Unless I missed that on here. Nope. Okay, that is redundancy. It also has power over Ethernet, like most of the studio tech stuff. Mm -hmm. So if that can help cut down on the amount of, you know, glow boards you've got floating around zip tied inside your rack. All right, so we were going to snag a couple of these, I think, at least one. So we have. couple of those which would be not going into here. I don't remember why I had those there, but these will actually... Oh, if you're right, these, your IEM transmitter. Ah, right, right, right. <clears throat> so a couple of these. Everything is right with the world. That will be floor director. So theoretically speaking, this could be, we said, our producer. We got our A1. Maybe a floor director. I think I spelled that right. And how about, I don't know, the, the size that this is kind of scaling out to be, I feel like, you know, especially because it's only a solo, we might have a, a director slash TD. I think they can handle that. Um, these are going to be our wireless IFBs. Again, without digging out model numbers. We'll leave those generic for now. Uh, with the Yamaha Sound Console, you could just use a slot in card instead of the converter. Um, the I would disagree because the Yamaha slot one that only does 16 channels um, per, per slot, which has kind of been a scourge on the industry for I think the last 10 years now as people have moved on to bigger and better audio counts. So specifically for for Dante, right? Or is that for the two converter? I think they refer to the Medi. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm not familiar with that mixer. But, so Yamaha has their mini Yagdi or however you pronounce it slot format, but it's limited to 16 channels. And they've they've got a variety of cards, Dante for the older mixers, Waves, Rocknet, Maddie. AES, SDI, so on and so forth. Right. But I, I'm 
since um, you got an X32 and it's only got one slot, then there's really no other way to do that. And landing everything straight from the router into Dante also means you can send audio from the router to anything else as well if that ever became useful versus having to take a direct out from your mixer then. We're going to say this is CG and clips, and that should about cover it. Camera ops, and yeah. Excellent. In which case then, yeah, that's going to all come through there. That's going to be, might as well just move that in there. Well, we'll leave that there just so we can see that the word clock sync is happening. Make sure this all still makes sense. Dante coming out now and going into there. And then also we can run this into Let's, uh, so the Xbox would go to your switch on the other page, and then that switch would also go to your X32. Right. Keep it all in one big bucket. So this would be our Midas for our... Uh, I'm now, like, super paranoid. I'm going to, like, <laughs> mispronounce this. I don't know, it still sounds like Bear Ringer to me. Uh, we'll just say Mixer Dante card. Uh, so we got that, which is going to also go into our switch. And this guy, where did you go? This guy. Yeah, so that's going to be into our Dante network as well which I believe you mentioned. Let's move you up. All right. Well, there we go. Very exciting. Uh, now we got to do prompter. Hey, I appreciate all the uh, insights on this. That was uh, very useful. Yep, no problem. You know where to, where to find me if you ever want to try this for real. So. All right. Now that I have this uh, Discord channel created, um, I probably can now uh, use this a little more. I can pop on and, you know, everyone can talk and we can certainly do things with that. So that's exciting. All right, so we had talked about prompter, which we're getting now down to the wire here. So let's come up with a quick prompter chain. I hope you guys learned as much about uh, Dante Intercom as I did today. Very exciting. Uh, what? Am I doing prompter? <laughs> We're going on five and a half hours. Oh my goodness. Uh, this this was a good idea. This is fun. Um, honestly, it was a a subscriber that messaged me on Instagram and was telling me that he was given a college assignment to basically design something similar to what we're doing. They were given prerequisites, um, you know, basically a tender that this is what needs to be built. And it's like they gave them that and they said, you have four weeks to figure it out. And they reached out to me and it's like, where do I start? I was like, huh, I'm reading over this, this, uh, requirement and 
I was like, this goes a little bit beyond just like something you can just kind of research. So I was like, how can I help this guy? Oh, I'm not going to do his homework for him, certainly. But uh, that's that's where it came to me. It's like this this could be kind of fun. We'll we'll build a theoretical control room, and if uh, if it helps them pick it up along the way, then that's great. It's ultimately comes to the goal of the channel, which is to spread the knowledge and you know uh, make you a better broadcaster. So. And full disclosure, uh, about 10 minutes into the live stream, I got a uh, text message from my wife and said, you didn't do the intro. So sorry for those who are looking for that. There is no broadcast buddy TV intro for this. All right, maybe at the end, maybe. All right, analog teleprompters. So my only prerequisite was I wanted something that could do the hardware flip um, in that. And I don't shop for teleprompters that often. Um, I know Winscript, I know Icon. Um, oh, man. Um, you got the dumb little cheap iPad ones. Uh, Let's let's look at uh, Winscript. Win Winscript? Did I spell that incorrectly? I feel like I probably did. Uh, okay. I can I can. Why do I feel like I'm? Majorly spelling this wrong. Okay, that's not what I want. So we got the looking on this in the Discord HD five fifty. What diagram are you? What is this? The one that I'm looking at does, which should be this one, right? H CU HD 500. You're sending me the 550. Is that what I said I wanted to use? I don't even remember. That was like in the first hour, 550. I am looking at the wrong manual. And that's even what I searched. Well, this is going to make things even interesting. -er. I bet you it's not even going to show me the back plane of this. But you, you just sent it to me. So let's pull that up for everyone to see. All right, let's take a gander. Oh, that's real great. Um, so we have our picks out, waveform, return. OK, maybe we are going to have to run separate feeds for prompters anyways. Yeah, it's probably because I think these are so new. Um, huh, well, OK. Interestingly enough, well, for the sake of argument, we'll just say we're running uh, independent prompters, which makes this a lot easier. We'll just make them HD then. Uh, OK, so we'll go icon prompters and. What are you, 17 inch, 17 inch? They're all 17 inch. Well, you're 12 inch. I actually owned uh, a set of uh, the PT-1200s before.
before they implemented hardware flip. And it was not a great decision. <laughs> Had to get a decimator. Um, and the reason being was uh, it was doing a, a shoot for uh, a town hall meeting out of the truck and they wanted a teleprompter. So, you know, we got a couple of those, figured we'd use them in the future. And uh, this is not what I want at all for a prompter. Is it? Well, I guess with the right hardware, maybe. No, uh, okay, we're gonna search HD prompter. But anyway, um, so for uh, a quick, quick and easy fix, we used um, the 1200s, uh, a decimator to, with a scaler in it to flip the computer output that we were running. Um, uh, yep, that'll come to me. Oh man, Rundown Creator. Yeah, we were using a uh, Rundown Creator to for them to write their script in a in a uh, NRCS type way, and use the built-in teleprompter software there. So there was that. What are you? Okay, I can. You're letting me down. Uh, Auto script. That's what I was trying to say earlier. Win script. That's the software. Uh, Auto script. They make some pretty beefy teleprompters. For PTZ cameras. Oh, yes. Here we go. Okay. What are you? Eight inch. Man, I do not shop for teleprompters often enough. I don't know what I want. Uh, 17 inch. Let's see what these are. Uh, oh, again, that's for a PTZ camera. All right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to Marker Tech. We're going to search for teleprompter. Uh, teleprompter. So we have some filters here. Let's see. Pro video. That sounds like something we do. Uh, mirror image. Nope, that is not what I wanted at all. Auto script. That looks a little better. Oh, this one has a monitor on it too. I like that. Okay, we'll say, wow, that's expensive. I dig it. That's our prompter. What does it have for inputs? Surely HD video. Oh, that's labeled <laughs> super well. Uh, okay. So we got tally input, of course, for the sensor. That's great. Oh, we didn't even talk about tallies. Just assume we have tallies. Oh, wow. Inputs, inputs. Why are you not jumping out at me? There we go. HCSDI, perfect. Okay, that's what we're doing. We're going with these. And they have monitors. So we can run uh, those off of our Altrix as well. Excellent. <clears throat> We have prompters and we have, we are running them independently of our CCUs. So we don't need those. We're just going to say that you are prompter one, prompter two, prompter three. And we're going to have a, look how clever we're gonna be here. We're gonna go PC, we're gonna go icons and we are going to get a
sure these all look right. Oh, taking it. Maybe. And hopefully that scales to a reasonable thing. And that will, of course, uh, probably if we're doing this correctly, this would be a software that supports like a HDSDI video output card instead of just like mirroring the screen. So we'll assume that there's an output card on this. And we will run it through a DA to get it to all of these. So this will be a HDSDI distribution amp. We'll say probably like a one by four would be more than enough. So we'll pull that out of there. And we will run that into the inputs of all of these. Yeah, you definitely could. But my argument with that and I, if you keep them all on separate pages and you go to load that one document, does it have to load all of the pages before you can do anything? So for example, like keeping them on separate documents, does that make it more advantageous in the field? Like you're trying to pull this up on your smartphone just to check something quick? I don't know. Um, there is certainly that possibility. But uh, because I feel like that could be a monster load time. But that is definitely a possibility. And I do that in some of my other smaller projects. And uh, what, what, uh, what he's talking about, everybody, is you can actually create pages, kind of like an Excel sheet. So you can create multiple pages here and you can rename them and things like that. Um, make a master page out of it. So that is definitely a useful functionality. And you can even layer stuff. So I've done that before too, where um, like, oh, do one layer on a single page that'll be video and then a second layer, which is network and then sync. And uh, again, there's a lot of different ways you can approach that. Uh, why are you going up there? That is not where you need to be. Oh, no. Oh, OK. We're, <laughs> we're just going to redo that line. Uh, swap. OK, so there is that going for it. And then I believe it has the I think my eyes are starting to go crossed. Inputs. Why is this not jumping out at me? I'm losing it. Prompter monitor, talent monitor, script in, in oh my, okay. Uh, okay, two HDSDI inputs. I assume one is, yeah, for the feedback monitor. So we can say that we're going to have our all tricks since we certainly have the outputs available. And we will run outputs of this to our monitors. And there's got to be a cleaner way I can do this. Um, 
we'll make these all just larger. Maybe not that large. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. Thank you, Jeremy. It's all for you guys. And we're going to do this. We're just going to move these up. And like I said, we have our Altrix here. So that's going to supply some outputs here so that we can feed those all. Should we want to, we could do just a single output and we could DA everything so that they all just see the same thing. But honestly, where's the fun in that? Something like that. And did I see that these had a network port to them? Why? LAN. Why? Why would your teleprompter ever need network? Oh. Maybe for time code? I think it's for time code. Don't know, that would be something we'd have to look into, crack the manual open. But anyway, this would be kind of the, the concept here. Again, this would be probably some sort of an output card with our professional teleprompting software, getting it to a DA, getting it into all of these, and then of course our outputs to our monitors so we can see what we're doing. And uh, we could absolutely also incorporate a tally system into this. Um, the solo, Carbonite solo, wherever you have gone, right? That can certainly, that has a uh, tally output, which I think is a DB, oh, DB24, and make me scratch my head on that one. somewhere. Production switchers, solo. Yes. You could also do that with the uh, with the uh, all tricks. Specifications. All. I am curious now. Did I get that right? What did it say? DB24 for tally? Aha, 24, how about that? So yeah, you could do it with that. Um, so you could run that in, especially to the cameras, which is something you would more than likely want to do. So you could run your tallies so your camera people know when they're on air. So that would be something similar to that, running off of that. No, what are you doing? Stop. And yeah, I don't know, guys. I think, uh, oh no, let's uh, undo that. I think we have a good basis here. Good, good basis for everything that we said that we were going to do. Yeah, I you guys you guys are more than welcome. Absolutely. This this was a blast. I enjoyed uh I enjoyed the interaction. You know, that's something that you don't get out of just by doing the standard videos. Uh I mean shy of the the comments and which I I love I love the interaction there, the comments and everything like that. Uh talking to my Redditor friends has been a blast too. Just overall, this this whole project here uh, for the channel has been a lot of fun. Um, I do a lot of teaching. Um, 
at all levels on uh, production equipment and uh, I do teaching for high schoolers for volunteering and that kind of stuff at uh, my alumni in the local area. So um, I'm really passionate not only about our industry, of course, but also about making the resources available, you know, that either I never had and I had to, you know, learn from other people or uh, things like that. So I, I just feel like there's such a, a vacuum right now for resources. So I wanted to make this whole channel, this whole project and everything like that is just another avenue for people to go out, learn the stuff. And it's just been a lot of fun. So thank you guys all for being part of this. My first live stream, six hours to build a control room. Is it a perfect control room? No, but I think we all learned some things along the way, which is great. In any case, um, We'll catch you right here next time on Broadcast Buddy TV. And I'm realizing now I don't have a thanks for watching slide. So we're going to go back to the starting slide. Stream is starting soon. So thank you again, everyone. Have an excellent night or day or whatever part of the world you're in. Thank you so much. Like, share, and subscribe.